Hey, what is up, you guys? We are live again for another Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup. Today, we've got 64 players competing, so this should be a uh, really fun, fast-paced tournament. And also, I've got some pretty cool matches lined up to show you guys as well. For those who are new here and aren't exactly sure what's going on, this is a regular Master Duel tournament series that Konami is hosting. And it's actually pretty simple. You can sign up for it on Discord. I've got the information down in the description. And they they do these on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. So, uh, yeah. Basically, I'll be spectating these matches and hosting them, of course. And you guys in chat can sort of just join along for the ride. We should be watching some pretty interesting stuff. The first round's going to start. I should probably mention, too, awesome prizes that you can win. Today's tournament's only a 64-player tournament, so... The first place winner is going to be able to get a Master Duel hoodie, similar to the one that I'm wearing, actually, as well as some white and black Master Duel sleeves. Yes, these are the real-life Master Duel sleeves. And, uh, yeah. Now, there are also, of course, larger tournaments. They've got 128-player ones, like what we'll be doing tomorrow, as well as even 256-player ones. I think Konami's even planning to do some 512 player tournaments that will have some really cool special prizes i heard something about a ps5 and these are free to enter so i mean you know all very cool anywho um you guys let me know of course if there's anything wrong with the stream if there are any issues um but if not we will be starting here in just a moment also um of course if you haven't already make sure that you like the stream that would obviously be much appreciated there's actually a little secret on youtube where during live streams if a lot of people like the stream at the same time it pushes it out to more people like just more visibility it's just a trick i learned apparently it actually works it's worked in past streams so that would be really 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 cool to see anywho though how's everybody doing while i'm waiting for the matches to start i guess i can kind of chat a little bit see what's up see what's going on oh okay actually no here we go the first first round is beginning so let's see if there are any cool matches happening that i can watch in particular i've got a little discord server where they kind of notify me of like neat matches that might be fun to watch we're gonna start i think at table three this time so yeah here goes We'll watch from the beginning, which has started, and this should hopefully catch us up pretty fast. And remember, guys, if you want to join in on these Master Duel Challenger Cups, they're doing plenty of them. All the information is in the Discord that's linked beneath the stream. Here we go. Okay, so this is Pokemana versus Suzaka. Wow. Starting off the bat, of course, the first deck we're going to see is Snake Eyes. So they start off with Ash. Looks like they've gotten Poplar. You can use this effect, summon itself, grab Divine Temple, activate Divine Temple, place a Flamberg in the spell trap zone, linking Poplar off into a Link Karibo. Poplar's gonna use its effect, put itself in the back row as well. Then we follow up with a wanted Seeker of Simple Spoils, grabbing Diabell Star, and sending Poplar to special summon Diabell Star. When she's summoned, of course, she's going to set Original Simple Spoils, Snake Eye. Going ahead and activating it, sending Link Karibo. Getting Jet Synchron out. We're going to Link, not Link, Sync both of them off. I'm assuming this is a Sync and not a Link. Yeah, okay, it's a Sync. For everybody's favorite, Borload Savage Dragon. So, on Summon, we all know what it's about. Or we would, but it looks like Pokemon has got Nibiru, the primal being. This is actually always a fun one to see, kind of disrupting those combos. You can't be entirely sure that Nibiru will save you against Snake Eyes, but it'll certainly help you out. So, yeah, Nibiru gets summoned, but the problem with that is that Divine Temple also activates since the opponent special summoned a card. Does allow them to special summon Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon. Wanted's gonna go ahead and activate in the grave, do a little bit of a recycle job here. And Jet Synchron activates in the grave. Sends a Wanted from hand, special summons itself back to the field. 
I'm assuming we can expect a Link summon here. We make IP Masquerina. And of course, Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon's gonna summon back Snake Eyes Poplar and Ash. So this turn, despite getting interrupted by Nibiru, does not seem to actually be uh, all too much of a um, deviation from how a normal Snake Eyes turn would go. Linking it to Promethean Princess, Bestower of Flames. Yeah, Jet Snake Eyes pretty nuts. It is pretty nuts. The fact they can just keep coming back. Or not keep coming back, but I mean, you know. The fact that it's searchable straight from deck and then can come back. So Promethean Princess brings back Snake Eyes, Flamberg, and then it puts IP Masquerade in the back row, meant to, of course, be summoned during the next turn. We link both of these monsters, Jet Synchron, Promethean Princess, we make Amphibious Swarmship, Amblowale, and the little combination of Amblowale plus Promethean Princess in the graveyard is absolutely terrifying, to be completely honest. Amblowale can summon back Promethean Princess, or if Promethean Princess comes to the field and then gets destroyed while this thing's in the grave, you get to pop a card in the field, it doesn't target. It's really pretty insane just how much the Snake Eye deck can do, but that was all just Suzaka's turn. We're now going to see what Pokemon has got to do to uh, come back in this situation. I like this username, Pokemona. And of course, if you guys are just joining the stream, obviously a like is very appreciated, and more importantly, um, say hi in chat. Love to see ya. Mikonko! Okay, cool. So it's look like, looks like it's a Mikonko versus Snake Eyes. Duel. These first several rounds are going to be best of one, so this should be a, a, a zippy tournament. So we actually have seen a lot of success from Makonko, at least when I was streaming these tournaments last weekend. Makonko can surprise people quite a bit, even Snake Eyes, just because it's really easy to set up a situation where you either tribute your opponent's monsters off for like a Lava Golem or a Kaiju, or you even just attack with like double-edged sword and just do enough damage to win outright, even amidst, you know, powerful negation cards and all that. Anyways, though, um, IP Mascarena in this case I think is going to cause a few problems here. You get summoned, and not only that, that's off Divine Temple, but not only that, it's now activating its effect. It's going to do a Link Summoning. What will it Link Summon into? A few options exist. There's obviously uh, Apollosa is usually the go-to, but you can also make things like um, Underworld Goddess. That sort of stuff. Underworld Goddess is actually really good because it lets you get rid of one of your opponent's cards in the process. Depending on what they're playing, that could be really disruptive. But we go for Apollosa this time. So, Apollosa, as we know, has 3,200 attacks since it used 4 cards, and that means that's 4 monster negations. Ugh, oh, man, I do not envy Pokemon's position here. I really don't. Paul, commentator training arc. Feels like it. I'm not super used to commentating Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! duels. I feel like I'm much more of a player than a commentator, but... I'll try to get better. I mean, I'm certainly learning a lot. I've watched a lot of games from Snake Eyes just over the past couple tournaments like this, so I'm learning. Definitely learning. Wild that even in the opponent's turn, Snake Eyes are able to do this much stuff, you know? Like, I mean, it's um, it's Pokemon's turn, but like Suzaka feels like they've done more of the playing. I guess that'll be changing here in a sec. So anyways, we use, what is this, Reflection Rondo? It's going to take Opelosa and... Oh goodness, what's just happening? Oh, Nibiru's activating. Wow. Okay. So they actually Nibiru'd... 
sort of themselves, in a sense, since um, five summons had occurred on their own turn. That's crazy. But I get the play here. Okay, so they used Nibiru to get rid of everything, and then they got to resummon back Hare the Sword Mikanko. He gets equipped, and um, it's going to make Suzaka take the damage for this. That's only 6,700, though, so that's not enough to win, right? Oh, okay, at the end of the battle phase, though, or the damage step, they get to bounce a car in the field back to the hand. They bounce back their Nibiru. That's actually pretty smart. Okay, cool. And so, by bouncing Nibiru back, this actually kind of puts Snake Eyes in a bit of a tricky position. A lot of their best cards are in the graveyard now. Amblo Ale and, um... Hermitian Princess can obviously come back, but that might not be happening anytime super soon. And this means that under Nibiru, or with the threat of Nibiru anyway, they can't summon more than five times, or they are going to lose their field again. Not the biggest deal, really. I mean, like, Snake Eyes, as we know, can play through Nibiru, but still, it's a bit of an interesting situation to be in. However, here's the problem that I fear. They can just use Wanted, and, like, honestly, they could just start, like, swinging with stuff like Diabell Star. It's not particularly hard, and we know that Makanko doesn't really have a way to, like, quickly come back from a situation like this, so... That sort of gives me pause. It's a bit of a concern. And... I almost forgot, the token has 6,700 attacks, so... Yeah, um, that's gonna clear it. That's the game, so congratulations to Suzaka. For winning against Pokemon with Snake Eyes against Makonko. Hey everyone, just got here. What did I miss? Well, we just finished watching a game between Makonko and Snake Eyes. Now we're going to catch up on another game from, let's see, Boy versus High. These are interesting players' names, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you for the super chat um, from Chris Tutu. Happy to see these kind of live streams from you Paul and watching for years. Give up for good work. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, we'll use the fast forward function to catch up on what's going on in this game. Since we're going to be watching it like live, sort of, we can use the fast forward to quickly get to whatever point they're at in the duel. It looks like this is branded, at least at a cursory glance. Not sure what they're playing against, but Hi Hi, that's the person's name. Hi Hi is um, playing against Boy. Boy. Okay, not the scariest first turn from a branded deck. All right, what's going on? Infernoble Arms, Durandal. Oh, an Infernoble Knight deck? Now this is a treat. Okay, cool. I don't know very much about this deck though. Um, this is my first time seeing it played in a tournament like this, anywho. And they do seem to be using a Death Bell Star sort of Snake Eyes engine in it as well. But still, I will always uh, give some credit for anybody who uses Infernoble Knights in a terrifying metagame like this. I also forget that Ice Old is still legal in Master Duel. Pretty cool. Okay, so they're banishing to try to summon Phoenix Gear Freed. Wow. Blazing Cartucha tried to Synchro Summon, they used Gamma. Instead, Gamma is actually going to help them get more warm bodies in the field to attack with. Main Phase 2. Linking it to Ferocious Flame Swordsman. What's this do? Because all the warrior monsters 500 attack. And if it gets destroyed, you can target a non-linked warrior in the grave and special summon it. Wow. Not a bad link monster to make, actually. Okay, so they're going to make another Mirror Jade. And that's going to banish Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed. A little unfortunate. Okay, so back to Boy's turn. Yeah, in that last game, I liked the idea of using Nibiru, but uh, definitely didn't really work out. It was the best they could do. Oh, looks like this game is about to end. Yeah, all right. High highs, branded deck. Unfortunately, takes down boys. <laughs> uh, Infernoble deck. It was always cool to like get a chance to see Infernoble Knights get played. It just didn't really work out super well this time. Okay, let's see what production's telling me. 
nothing in particular, so we'll just spectate this game from where we are. This is the table five. Don't know who these duelists are, but we're going to find out. Anyways, if you're new to the stream, make sure that you drop a like. Always appreciated. Helps to send the stream out to more people. And um, press one to... Oh my goodness. What is going on here? Snake Eyes versus Branded. I feel like we'll be seeing these two decks a lot today. What's going on here? Okay, so it's currently only turn two. And Branded and White has been activated. Okay, so it looks like they're resolving it. They're about to fusion summon one fusion monster from the extract using monsters from the hand or field as material, including a dragon monster. They can also banish from the grave if they're using Fawn of Albaz, which it seems like they're doing. Hey, everyone. Yeah, hey, everybody who's uh, just tuning in. Shrinka Squad, Ethan A. Didn't they have a normal slash rare festival a while back? Yeah, Master Duel's done the normal slash rare festival, I think at least twice, I want to say. Or you can only use normal and rare cards, no SRs or URs. A pretty fun format, actually. Generally. Sometimes certain decks will, like, sort of overtake it, and that's not always the best, but depends, you know. Alright, what's happening here? Albion fusion summons for Predaplant Dragos Topelia. And by banishing Tri Brigade Mercurier, they get to search Fall of Albaz or a monster that mentions it from deck to hand. Wow, Nibiru is like already MVP today. I've seen a lot of these things activated now. But Flare L'Oreal versus um Quek One. So Flare's chaining their um Dragos Topilia on Snake Eye Ash. It won't really do much, but it's actually just so that they can use Renbrum, chain to it, and bounce a card back to hand. So Nibiru no, I was gonna say banishes everything, tributes everything, summons itself in attack mode. Token in defense, I presume. Jeez, that's a big Nibiru token. That's a really, really big Nibiru token. Okay, so Albion activates, gets a free draw, sends Branded Retribution to Grave. Branded Retribution lets them recycle a card. Probably Branded Fusion, I presume. Yep, it's Branded Fusion. Looks like they had not activated Branded Opening earlier. What's the biggest Nibiru token I've ever seen? Huh, um... This is close. I saw one with close to 20,000 attack ones, I think. Just one time when I was in Ranked Ladder. Around 20k, I think, is the biggest Nibiru I've seen. Alright, so we're ending our turn at that. Of course, I'm sure there's a few Graveyard Effects, Blazing Cartesia, and also at least one of these branded cards. High Spirits, I believe, will probably come back to hand. I know we've got Albion's effect to resolve, too. This is always the thing with the branded deck that makes it so scary, is just the fact that, like, branded can re recover so much, um, recover and recur so much, just at the end of their own turn. Oh, and the end phase, they're also using branded and red? Okay, getting back Fallen of Albaz, they're going to do another... Fusion Summon as well. Guess we'll wait and see. Yeah, they are doing a Fusion Summon. Albaz and Kit for Lubelion. Man, all this in the end phase, too. Lubelion pitches Cartesia and. Guiding Quim also activates and a chain on top of it. So it's going to get to summon back Rinbrum. Then Lubelion gets to Fusion Summon. I probably won't actually use Rinbrum just because like, Rinbrum's a really good thing to have in the opponent's turn. And they make Mirror Jade. 
They could even actually use Mirror Jade's effect this turn. Yep, and they do. And they do. Which do you guys like more? Branded or Snake Eye? This is actually a question that, like, I mean, I'm curious. Okay, press 1 for Branded, press 2 for Snake Eye in terms of which deck you like more. Because I feel like Branded's been in Master Duel longer, so it can feel a little bit more tiring to see. But I also think that Snake Eye is a stronger deck, and so people probably don't like that as much either. It's a tough one. We're going to have a poll. Which do you like more? Alright, I'm adding uh, the poll into the chat. You guys can, can vote on it. We can get to the bottom of this. I have a feeling that Brandon will probably win, just because it's like... More people have the deck built, I feel, but that's just a hunch. All right, so back to click one. Click one sounds like uh, click one, like ones in chat. Uh, anywho, so we go Ash into Poplar. This is kind of routine. We're also going to use Sinful Spoils of Subversion Snake. Now this card is actually so a few things to note about this card and its interactions with Mirror Jade in particular, because that's what they targeted. If this card puts a Mirror Jade into the back row, and I know some of you guys already know this, but just some information. Um, if this puts Mirror Jade in the back row, the branded player can actually not summon another Mirror Jade to the field. Since Mirror Jade says you can only control one Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. So, even while it's in this backfield, it's like still considered Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. So, like, they can't have another one up in the monster card zone. Just an annoying little tidbit that comes up more than you would think. Unfortunately, more than you would think. Ah, alright, so Quick One concedes the duel. I don't think that they conceded by choice, but actually probably because time ran out in the round. These rounds are actually only 20 minutes long. So the players don't necessarily, you know, get to always finish their games on time. And, you know, we did get to watch three different games, so... There was actually a game that they said was really spicy, and I want to I want to watch it while we wait for the next round to begin. The rounds are 20 minutes, best of one, so a little bit of a rush. Anyways, for those of you guys who are just joining in, this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup, and uh, we are watching, commentating over these 64 players who will be competing for the awesome prizes that you guys see on screen. Oh, so this is interesting. MBT actually is playing in this tournament. I did not know that and kind of forgot to mention it, but yeah. We can watch his first round match, actually, if you guys want. Um, this took place at another table. I wasn't aware of it, but he played against Yatsumugi. So we'll watch this one from MBT's perspective, see what happened while we wait for round two to begin. Let's see what he's playing. So if you guys want, we can probably follow a few of, uh, a few of Joseph's matches today. Looks like he's on Snake Eye and he played against. Oh my god, it's this, it's Yatsumuki from last week with his Vanquish Soul Snake Eye deck. I love that deck so much, that was a really fun one. It's not the deck that ended up winning the tournament last week, but it was still a really cool one. I like Vanquish Soul. I'm obviously a little bit biased towards that deck. Jeez, lots of hand traps in this opening hand. Not bad hand traps. He used Droll and Lockbird, so that should halt some of the momentum from uh, Yatsumugi, but not, like, really. Okay. Ash. Oh, jeez, I forgot. I didn't see the cross-up designator in the hand. Well, 
while we watch this, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Yeah, this is single game elimination to my understanding. So, um, well, it's not elimination. It's just like it's best of one games, but the tournament format is Swiss and then they're going to cut to a top cut and that's what we'll watch and um, spectate like, and that'll be best two out of three. So right now we're just kind of in these preliminary, sli preliminary Swiss rounds. Okay, I just got word that round two is starting in five minutes, so this is great. We'll have a little bit of time to finish this match off. We're going to spectating MBT versus Yatsumugi. Looks like this person is also a Twitch streamer. Not one that I'm aware of, but they have certainly been doing well in these tournaments so far. Does 20 minute rounds mean people can stall their turns with a life point lead? I suppose you could, but it'd be pretty difficult in this uh, day and age of you get to just stall with life points. Although, apparently slow play is a thing that you can get in trouble for in these tournaments, I've heard, so don't be doing that. Snake Eyes is $1,000. How much is Vanquish Soul? Um, well, I mean, I don't know that... Vanquishol has much of a, a price tag on it. The guards are easy to get, though, at least in my experience. Nowadays, anywho. Back when it first came out, they did get a lot of ultra rares, so... It'd be tough to pull them all from a pack. I would like to see a volcanic deck play today. Maybe that'd be fun. I'd, I'd want to see that. In this Discord server, people can, um... People can let me know interesting matches to keep an eye out for. So next round, I want to just start watching kind of the interesting matches that people notify me about. Rogue decks, things like that. Stuff that would be fun to watch. I don't just want to just watch Snake Eye all day. I believe anybody, uh... Anybody here can agree with that. Table 15, room 1, versus Jeff Leonard. Jeff Leonard is playing in this? Whoa, 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 Chad. I had no clue. Jeff Leonard is actually playing in this. For those who don't know, Jeff Leonard, the infamous Exodia duelist from the YCS last year and many other YCSs as well, is actually playing in this. So, table 15, room 1, they say. Cool. Cool. We will definitely watch Jeff Leonard. Press 1 if you want to watch Jeff Leonard see him maybe Exodia somebody. Would be pretty fun. Okay, so that's an unfortunate L for MBT. But... It's not to say that he can't come back later in the tournament. I mean, it's only round 1. You can certainly afford to lose, like, a game... Oh, wow, Jeff Leonard is, in fact, in here. Okay, cool. So, I think table 15 is what they said. Yeah, cool, okay. Huh. Yeah, so this is table 15. We're going to be watching Jeff Leonard's next game as soon as it begins. Definitely, definitely excited to see what he's piloting today. This should be fun. So we'll hop in this as soon as it um, is available, but while you guys are um, just hanging out in chat, a couple quick favors. First of all, if you're interested in joining any of these Master Duel Cups in the future and winning some of the prizes that are at stake today, like a Master Duel hoodie or some Master Duel sleeves, you can find all the information that you need to join down in the description of the stream slash video. Konami's doing these on like Fridays. Saturdays and Sundays, so there are plenty. Even if you can play in this one, you can play in the next one. It's free to enter, so there's really no reason not to. Also, uh, if you just got here, make sure that you like the stream, 
liking the stream is kind of a little hack for YouTube where if you guys all like it at the same time, it does show it to more people on the homepage and stuff and like recommended. So please do that. Much appreciated if you do. You don't have to, but I mean, it would certainly be cool. And if you're just lurking in chat, you're just kind of lurking and watching, you know, you can do that. You don't have to talk, but you can just press like. All right, here we go. So, this is um, Sam versus Jeff Leonard. That is Jeffrey Leonard, the infamous Exodia player. Also infamous for playing Mystic Mind. But, um, yeah, let's see if he's playing Exodia today. That'd be, that'd be a treat. He's playing against Sam D. Pogger. Jeff starts off with Fossil Dyna, Pachycephalo. So, it looks like he is playing a stun deck of some kind. He activates Prohibition as well. What's he calling with that? Hmm. Infinite Impermanence. Ooh, that's brutal. That's pretty smart. Yeah, Infinite Impermanence being the one thing that could stop Fossil Dyna from, you know, locking out a player. So, yeah, Jeff starts with Fossil Dyna, Prohibition calling Infinite Impermanence, and two set cards. wonder what they are. Anyways, playing against Sam D. Pogger. Don't know what Sam is using, but they are forced to just set two cards. Don't know what those are. I assume that the Fossil Dyna is probably shutting them way down. How do you guys in chat feel about Fossil Dyna Pachycephalo? You think it's a uh, good, fun, healthy card? Or, you know, necessary evil sort of thing? Do you hate it? Like, seriously. I, that's actually a, uh, a serious question. How do you feel about uh, Fossil Dyna? We'll ask in chat as well. Make a little quick poll here. He also adds the Water Barrier Statue, Barrier Statue of the Torrents, as well. And so if his opponent's on Snake Eye, they definitely don't have any water monsters they can easily summon. I mean, I guess there's like Zelantis, but you gotta get there first. Not really happening. Oh, okay. So even though Prohibition has called Infinite Impermanence, Sam does retaliate with Forbidden Droplet, sending two cards away, a hero lives and called by the grave, in an attempt to negate both these monsters' effects. Oh, Jeff hits him back with Dark Bribe. Oh, man, that sucks so bad. Dark Bribe negates the spell or trap. Does let uh, Sam draw a card, but he really needed Fossil Dyna and stuff to be, like, turned off so that he can play. It looks like Sam is on a hero deck, and unfortunately, um, they're just forced to set a card and end the turn. So far, our poll seems to, ju to suggest that more people actually like Fossil Dyna than hate it. That's a surprising result. I wasn't expecting people to say that. I know a lot of people hate dealing with Fossil Dyna. It's one of those cards that's probably more fun to see in a uh, spectator view like this. Oh man, they had to set Max C. It gets destroyed. That's rough. Yeah, it's probably more fun to watch it shut down Snake Eye and stuff, but um, if you're on the receiving end of it in a tournament, Not so cool. Alex is in chat, by the way, everybody. Say hi to Alex. He says he doesn't like Fossil Dyna because he doesn't like winning by not letting his opponent play. Very noble. Chat trolling. Yeah, it might be. Like I said, I mean, I don't think Fossil Dyna like, needs to be banned or anything like that, but it's definitely like a card where it's very easy to have a different opinion on it when you are facing it as opposed to just watching it. Anyways, Sam activates Rhoda. Gets Elemental Hero Shadow Mist to the hand. And they're just kind of forced to set. I'm assuming maybe that Sam set the Shadow Mist in the hopes of at least getting a search out of the deal. Uh, is that. Can I make my screen smaller? Sorry, Son Goku. But Konami provides all the assets for these streams. And so, um... The best I can really do in terms of, like, setting up different stream layouts is this or this. 
But I can do this, which will maybe let you see the full screen. But if I do the other view, then it like covers up the bottom corner. So let me know if you prefer this layout more than the other one. You probably do. We'll just go with that. Yeah, Alex does play Ursarctic, actually. It's a very obscure deck. I've only played against an Ursarctic deck like twice in my whole life. Just unmastered to a rank ladder. Okay, so you guys like this layout more, is what I'm hearing. This layout I'm on now. But then Son Goku likes this layout more. Huh. This is a tricky proposition. I, I might have to get some feedback to Konami after this, let him know um, to perhaps make an overlay that does a better job of, like, sizing the gameplay versus versus um, everything else. Okay, so it sounds like more people like this one, so we'll stick with this. If we get into a game where it becomes an issue, though, I think enough people can let me know that we can change it. Anyways, let's get back to this duel real quick. Two fossil dinos on the field and a barrier statue. I think I see where this game is going. Oh man, summons another barrier statue. Barrier statue of the drought. This is actually probably the one you see the least. Well, yeah, probably the one you see the least. Well, so, funny enough, um, Vision Hero Ferris has 1,800 defense. Which at least can wall these guys out. I mean, that's got to count for something. If your cam was over the top of the opponent's mate, it would be perfect. Yeah, I know. I'm going to tell Konami to do that because I, uh, I can't... I can't change these layouts that they have given me. That's just part of the whole sponsored uh, tournament thing. But I will give them you guys' feedback so that maybe next time they can recreate this overlay so that I can, like, move my face cam up to, um... over the opponent's mate. I mean, in fact... Maybe, just maybe. Yeah, but then I have to shrink it. I don't want to get in trouble. What do you guys think, chat? I mean, because, like, I'm obscuring this face down card right now, and I don't... I feel like people don't like that. Should I take a risk? Just kind of shrink my face cam, put it in the corner. I think I'll get in trouble. Press 1 if I should do it anyway. Press 2 if I should play it safe. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jeff Leonard is just a, a rude dude sometimes with uh, these solemn judgments. Okay, Elemental Hero Stratos, not actually too bad here. Is he able to actually be effective in it? Oh yeah, Strauss only pops cards for hero mo Wait, maybe he could have... Did I miss something? I thought Strauss would try to pop a card. Hmm, I'm confused. I might have missed something. Oh, there's the Moon Mirror Shield. So this is basically kind of the checkmate card for these stun decks. Normally you can swing over stuff like po Fossil Dino, Pachycephalo, but once Moon Mirror Shield's on it, it's just able to swing over everything. And now, you know, without like a very lucky Harpy's Feather Duster or something, th this this game's probably in the bag. And that's unfortunate for um, Sam because that would have been... That would have meant that we got to see heroes in action, which is also a really, really cool sort of rogue strat. But Jeff Leonard means business. He came to play. And by play, he means, like, you're not playing. Double Fossil Dyna, double Barrier Statue. Well, only one Fossil Dyna left now. But, um, Vision Hero Ferris has 1,600. It's just going to try to attack over something. He attacks over the Water Barrier Statue. Uh, got to do what he can, right? Ferris isn't going to survive an attack from Fossil Dino regardless, at least not that we can tell. Another barrier statue shows up. This is the light one. 
So no, neither player can special summon except lights or earth, aka no special summoning. And if you weren't sure about that, Fossil Dyna will just make it more clear for you. Neither player can special summon monsters. Ah, oh, nickel and dimes as well. So Sam's got 1,200 life points left. This is such a kind of sad struggle to have to watch, but them is the breaks, you know? Them is the breaks. All right, Elemental Hero, Liquid Soldier. Sam's decided they aren't going down without a fight. They attack the Light Barrier statue. It does deal a little bit of damage. Funny story here. They, based on just the monsters in the field right now, they won't actually lose next turn. Fossil Dino will swing over Liquid Soldier and deal 100, and then the Barrier statue can deal 1,000. So there will still be another turn, unless Jeff has another monster to summon, which is fairly likely. Oh, or Clockwork Knight. Or Clockwork Knight. Yeah, that'll that'll be the difference maker. Oh, sheesh. All right. Well, with that, Fossil Dyna is going to attack directly, and Jeff Leonard takes the win with a really brutally effective stun strategy. Congratulations to Jeff Leonard. That was fun. Let's see how far he gets. I saw that he won his first round, and so this is round two, which he also won. So that should be an interesting one. That's, uh, that's somebody to watch. I think MBT is also in this room. Let's see. Let's double check. If he's not in this room, then he's in the next one. That was his round last time. So I think I'm going to check the other table. Anyways, what did you guys think of the match? Did you feel like uh, Stun deserved that win? you feel like maybe not? I'm always mixed on Stun. I know some people really like it. I know some people really hate it. Um, I can't say that I'm a big fan of the complete kind of shutout Stun strategies, but anything is viable, so... Anything goes in this game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Anyways, I'm trying to find another match to watch. That's, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'll go back to the first tables. One, nine, two, nine. Okay. Here's a match we can watch. Roar Kalos versus Rezu. Or we would. Okay, it, it disappeared. Maybe the match just ended. Okay, how about OPX Slayer versus Abe Mania? Let's sneak in here and see what's going on in this round. What do people have to say about stun? What do you guys think? Not a fan, but he did earn the win. I was living vicariously through the fellow hero player. I think it was earned, Alex says. I think it was earned, but geez, I'd hate to play against it. Yeah, I that's kinda that's how it goes for me too. I think stun does have to work harder than it looks. It just seems miserable to actually face. Unchained versus Snake Eye here. Abe playing Unchained. Um, EX Slayer, who I think I recognized from last week as well. Um, on what looks like Snake Eye. Yeah, like, I, I will never say that stun, like, it takes zero skill or something like that. I think that it takes skill to play pretty much anything in this game. And, like, even the decks you hate the most do have to work harder than you probably think to to pick up dubs, particularly in a world of, like, you know, snake eyes and everything else. Not to mention, stun decks are usually pretty inconsistent. Like, you kind of got to just, like, work with whatever you open with in your starting hand, and that's not always great, so, you know. Some duelists are cruel. Sun Goku, you're right. Some duelists are, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's cruel either way, because, I mean, either you're, 
you know, if you're not playing a deck like Stun, where you're dealing with Fossil Dinas and Barrier Statues and, you know, D Fissure and stuff, then you're playing against, you know, a really powerful kind of meta strategy as well. So it's rough either way. I don't think anybody's, you know, catching any breaks here. A deck that I have not seen a load of in Master Duel so far is Unchained. Like, I see people play it here and there in these tournaments, but I feel like it hasn't really managed to put up the kind of results I was expecting. Oh, Sinful Spoils of Subversion. What card's gonna go? Unchained Abomination or Wave High King Caesar? Unchained Abomination it is, to the back row. Stun brings balance to the game. Hmm, you guys agree? Does stun bring balance to the game? In this poll that just ended, uh, people say that 55% of you guys hate Fossil Dyna and the rest of you guys love it. So, I guess that shows where the community's head's at with that card. It's closer to 50-50 than I thought, though. By the way, guys, if you ever want to suggest any polls to... Um, any polls that we can ask in chat while we uh, spectate, I'm always open for them. It's fun to just, to just vote and stuff. Oh, wow, we're almost at 300 live viewers. Cool. 284 from what I'm seeing on my screen right now. This is awesome, but we only have 146 likes on the stream. So, if you are watching and enjoying and just kind of hanging out having a little bit of fun, you don't have to chat or anything, though I would appreciate it if you said hi. However, please do like the stream. Liking the stream sends it out to more people. So, it looks like we're at 150 likes right now. If we can get to, like, 200 likes... And that might mean that we can get to over 300 viewers, maybe 350, something like that. That would be cool. So, um, yeah. Run it up, please. Please and thank you. Me love you long time. What? What do I have over here? I always got to show the new people. This is what people are playing for, by the way. They're playing for a Master hoodie. They're playing for sleeves. And this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup. So if you don't know what this is, these are some tournaments that Konami regularly hosts. Um, on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, streamed by myself and other content creators that you might know and love. You can get all the information that you need to join them down in the video description. Alex says, Stun is important, though I don't think it was intended to be an entire strategy to itself. That's an interesting perspective on it. I think that stun decks probably aren't like... I think that individually the cards like the barrier statues and stuff were designed to kind of be... Maybe like you use a barrier statue of the Inferno in a fire deck. But I don't know that they necessarily um had to... They were designed to all be used together. It just seems like that's more of an amalgamation created by the players. Not necessarily that it's a bad thing, but just that seems to be the case. Quentin German asked, do you have to be a PC player? You do not. You can play in the Master Duel Challenger Cups on console as well. Your Switch, your PlayStation, your Xbox, even your phone. Though I wouldn't maybe recommend that, because the phone signal and whenever I play Master Duel always seems really unreliable. That might just be my experience, though. Okay, let's see what production is telling me. Seems like the round is still going on. I can actually check the timer. Oh, there's only a minute left in the round, which means that... If we watch this match, it's only going to have a minute left. Let's catch what we can. It looks like this is branded up against branded? Cool. Plunder patrol sleeves, though. What is this? Incredible Ecclesia, the Virtuous. Summons the Golden Sword Soul. You don't see this one very often. However, if time works how I think it does, I think that Elephant number 5 is just going to end up losing this duel because they've only got like 15 seconds that I'm seeing. I don't know exactly how they enforce time in these tournaments. That's a good question. Yeah, okay, that is time of the round, so... 
Cool, that's the last match that we'll get to see of that. So that pretty much concludes our second round of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup. Hmm. Stun exists in almost any form of competitive games. That's okay, that's a question actually. Do you guys feel like stun like as a concept exists in every card game? And does it exist in other games too, like um maybe a defensive strategy in a fighting game? Like does that count as stun? For those of you guys who play like maybe Smash Bros, for instance, or Street Fighter, is there like a, a play style that you'd say is kind of or character that you feel is comparable to how stun works in Yu-Gi-Oh! I think it, it's very game dependent. Like, I would argue that the reason that a stun deck or, you know, a heavy control deck, lockout deck, whatever you want to call it, you know, Fossil Dyna, Barrier Statues, D Fisher, Necro Valley, whatever, set five. Um, I think that the reason why it's probably as contentious as it is in Yu Gi Oh! is likely just because Yu Gi Oh! itself moves so fast on average that, um,. That, like, the idea of being locked out feels proportionately more annoying than it does in other games. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! games can end in, like, a turn, right? And so, the one turn that you don't get to play feels like the end of the world. Like, that's why I think people dislike D-Shifter so much, or Droll, or Artifact Lancia in some formats, because, like, it kind of ends your turn. Whereas, like, Stun in other games, you'll still be playing the game against the person, you'll just feel more restricted. So... Yeah, stun equivalents in fighting games or zoners. I, I can I can believe that for sure. All right. Anyways, I'm gonna hop into this next room to prepare for the next round. Just reading what people say. Um, Yu Gi Oh used to last 10 turns. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's true. I think, like, Yu Gi Oh's increase in speed has made stun itself uh, more annoying as a concept. All right, next round starts in about four minutes. I can take a quick look at the pairings, although this doesn't tell me exactly what's going on. But, oh, okay, MBT is going to be playing against Kid Art. Okay, cool. So, we can actually watch MBT's game from the start. I think he's in the other room, though. Let me make sure he's not in here. Hexflex is a name I'm kind of familiar with. Gonna have to watch their games as well. Yeah, I'm sure you guys want to watch a little bit of MBT dueling, huh? Okay, let me hop in this other room then. Oh, wait, okay, here he is. All right, so as soon as this game begins, we will watch Joseph duel against... Uh, this player's name is... Kid Art. Kid Art. Although, it's not in English here. But that's what we'll be watching. As soon as it begins. I wonder if Alex, Gage, Doug, and Farfa are participating. Well, Farfa can't. I know he's not a United States player, and this is a United States-only Master Duel Challenger Cup. 
but other players yeah. might be. Uh, table two in room one. Alto says they've got some spice coming up as well. Okay. I think after this round, they're actually going to be cutting to top eight. Is what I was just informed. So this will not be a long tournament at all, though top eight is best of three. Worth noting. Table two, room one. I don't know what room I'm in. Five, three, one. Okay, cool. So basically, Table 2 and Table 3 are going to be the interesting ones to watch. We'll start by watching MBT's game, and then we'll also uh, watch Ole Koniski versus Sakia. These should both be cool, is what I've been told. That's what the streets are saying. Are they right? We'll find out soon. Anyways, okay. So, back to what everyone's saying in here. Barone and Apollosa feel like they need to get banned. Generic break my board cards are too annoying and unhealthy for the game in the long run. Konami should provide unique OSTs for these events. Totally agree with that. Totally agree. I've always wanted Master Duel to just have like a feature where you can pick the music that plays in your duel. Like, I just think that'd be cool. Oh, MBT is starting. Here we go. All right, Joseph, we're watching you. We're watching you. We know that Joseph is on Snake Eyes today, but what is his opponent playing is the question. Sam Art. Joseph's going first, activating Wanted Seeker as Sinful Spoils during the draw phase to avoid drawing Lockbird. Grabs their copy of Diabell Star and let the show begin. Alright, putting a poll in the chat. Combo or stun? What do people prefer? I know that that's kind of a, um... Slightly hyperbolic uh, poll, but... We didn't get where we are without being, uh... Binary in our beliefs, right? Okay. So this is so far looking like a pretty standard start for the Snake Eyes deck, piloted by MBT. We just got Ash and Poplar. Poplar is searched. Hmm, huge. We turn it into Link Karibo. We put Poplar in the back row. Link Karibo exits stage right for Diabell Star. The Black Witch. He's already got original sinful spoils. Can start something else, but if not, I expect that we'll be grabbing original sinful spoils snake eye. And that's what it is indeed. The Vine Temple gets activated. Placing a snake eye monster straight from hand, deck, or grave into the spell trap zone. It's Flameberg Dragon. Get used to watching these Snake Eye uh, turns because they will be happening. They will be happening indeed. 
Oh, we're almost at 300 viewers. Cool. Welcome to the stream, everybody. If you're new here, this is the Master Duel Challenger Cup. Drop a like on the stream. You can get some information on joining any of these upcoming tournaments for yourself down below in the description. And oh, Nibiru gets activated. Nibiru, the MVP of today. So it's going to get activated on Borload Savage Dragon. Now, Nibiru's good for stopping Borload Savage Dragon's effect in this brief window of vulnerability. However, this does not at all mean that Samart is out of the woods just yet, because by summoning Nibiru, it does activate the effect of Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. And that means Lemberg Dragon is still getting summoned. We all know that that means this turn is gonna continue. When these two monsters link away... They'll be making IP Mascarena, and more importantly, activating Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon's effect. What will he summon back? Snake Eye Ash and Jet Synchron? Very rude. Jet Synchron hasn't even used its revival effect yet. This is exactly the problem that I mentioned before, that Temple counters Nibiru. You know, you're not the first person I've heard to say that. Some um, reliable sources that I have heard opinions on Snake Eye from have also mentioned that they feel that Divine Temple can be quite obnoxious for Snake Eye. It's deceptive because while the card doesn't seem broken on paper, it does allow the Snake Eye deck to reliably deal with Nibiru, and even with Nibiru out of the picture, it's just a great way for the Snake Eye deck to continue to sort of amass advantage and recur turn over turn. It just always keeps them in the game. It's pretty rough. Nibiru against Snake Eye is good, but not, you know... It's, you're not out of the woods yet. This is the second time that we've seen Nibiru activated against Snake Eye, and it has not actually been effective enough to, like, completely halt a turn. And I had to say that is a little bit rough. This is why combo and recursion are worse than stun and negation. I do think that in Yu-Gi-Oh, typically combo is going to be on the driver's seat. Like in most duels, it's like, uh, even when when stopped, combo kind of tends to have the power to push through. Whereas usually if like a stun deck gets stopped, that's oftentimes it. Like we saw Nibiru resolve here, but clearly this is not the end of the turn. Because now we've got Promethean Princess, who, man, the summon animation looks really sick, but, oh, this effect... Snake Eye's Flamberg's back. Snake Eye Oak is gonna send cards. Man, wild stuff. Alex says, I also like whatever Gate Guardian is. What is Gate Guardian, do you guys think? Like the deck Gate Guardian? Is it mid range? Sort of control? I wouldn't call it stun, but I'd certainly call it like a controlled sort of strategy. All right, he makes Baron de Flua. Hmm? Oh, yeah, Unchained, Abominable Unchained Soul. I forgot, this can actually work. Since a card he controlled was destroyed, he can special summon Abominable Unchained Soul from the hand. And then, um, if they want, they can use Abominable Unchained Soul's effect to discard a card and destroy a card on the field. So I guess the goal is going to be to destroy Baron de Floor, most likely, I would assume. However, Baron's going to chain to that and negate the effect. That said, though, by destroying Abominable Unchained Soul, it will at least get Special Summon back during the end phase. So, that's something. I don't know how much use the thing will have, though. Or can it not even be summoned back? 
destroy the field and send there this turn. You can summon this card, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. Oh, you can only special summon it once per turn. Never mind. Didn't know that. I'm no Unchained expert, so... Yeah, that's unfortunate. Anywho, Called by the Grave is going to activate on Formula Synchron. Because Barum is going to try to summon it back. But my friend MBT has Cross Out Designator to stop Called by the Grave. Which also means that Barone gets to dip out, summon back Formula Synchron, and now, whenever Formula Synchron wants to in the main phase, it can sink back into Barone. And I have a bad feeling that's exactly what's going to happen. But first, we've got Ash Blossom on the tour guide. Ooh, another crossout designator. This is fun. Lots of vicious play happening here. So Crossout Designator this time, I believe, is going to be aiming for Ash Blossom. But first and foremost, Formula Synchron is going to chain. And so is Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon. Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon is going to be summoning IP Masquerina back out from the back row. Then these two monsters are going to Synchro Summon. And make our good friend Barone again. Isn't it great how this can just happen, you know? And so since Barone's back, it's once per on the field negation will also return in the process. Man, this is brutal. So, even though the Unchained player has access to... Like, they're able to resolve their tour guide, I'm not sure how much good that's going to do now that Barone's back with another negation. And we can't forget that Snake Eye Ash is going to search. Oak's going to special summon a monster back. Crazy, by the way, that Oak can get banished cards. That's just absolutely wild to me. Oh, yeah, and IP Masquerade is also chaining, so it's going to have a little quick... Uh, Quick little Link Summon. So, IP Masquerina and Snake Eye Oak. Link into Nightmare Unicorn. Then Oak resolves. Special Summon Jet Synchron back. Ash resolves. Grabs. Man, another Ash to the hand. That's insane that Ash can get another copy of itself, by the way. Like, what the heck? I had no idea. This is a bit much. Jesus. Is Snake Eyes... Press 1 if you think Snake Eyes is a little bit much. Like, it's the opponent's turn, man. Okay, well, um, despite it being Sam Art's turn, they're left with nothing. Or, well, it was their turn. But now, back to MBT. He's making access code talker. Access code talker is going to use Nightmare Unicorn. Go up to 5300 attack, and that is going to be the game. Congratulations to Joseph. MBT wins this round with a powerful dramatic finish from access code talker. Sweet. Now, I've also heard that Table 2 had a pretty a pretty good game to watch, so we're going to have a quick look at it, if I can find the replay anyway. See what's going on here. Oh, man. That was an intense game. I want to say intense, I mean, it's certainly a high-octane high one. It didn't seem like the Unchained player got to do a whole lot, but a lot happened. All right, what's this game? Snake Eye versus Unchained again? Oh, wow. 
Oh, this is something you don't always see in Snake Eyes, Assault Synchron. So maybe this is a little bit different. Definitely our turn. How does chat feel about our turn decks? How do you feel about, like, decks where they kind of do a lot of their playing on both your turn and their turn? You like that or not like it? I've heard people say they like it. They feel that it makes you feel a little more actively engaging. I think it's fine if the hour turn thing isn't preventing the opponent from playing at every step. Like, one of the decks I really like is um, Rescue Ace, and they can have a few effects that can play during the opponent's turn, but it's never really anything that's, like, stopping the opponent from playing. It's just, like, um, Rescue Ace Impulse, for instance, like summoning from deck, and you'll get, like, one of the big machine Rescue Ace monsters, and they'll just draw a card or something. Maybe I'm biased, though. I like Snake Eye a lot. Not Snake Eye. Not Snake Eye. I like Rescue Ace a lot. Snake Eye, uh, mixed opinions, but... Alex says that I like it when it's limited well, I guess. Like, I think Melfi does it well. Yeah, I think, like, decks like Melfi, that's fine. Uh, you know, they play in the opponent's turn, but they're not, like, kind of telling the opponent that they don't get to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So it's... It's complicated. Phantom 53 has an interesting perspective, actually. I like it because of how few turns the game has. Vanquish Soul is my favorite hour turn deck. That's actually a really, that's a good perspective to have on it, too. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! games typically only go, like, maybe three, four turns at most. On average, we'll say. Like, three or four turns. Could be five. Um, by allowing both players to play during both turns, maybe that's better. Because, um, like, you're getting to play more net Yu-Gi-Oh! Is maybe is that kind of what you're saying? Anyways, according to our poll, um, does Snake Eye do a little too much? 87% of you guys say, yeah, it does a little too much. 12% say, nah. Your boy Moy says, I love when people build decks that stick to their archetypes and don't just spam generic negates. Oh, well, Sakia surrendered, so Ole Kaneski or Ole Kaneski wins that one. Cool. After this round, we're actually going to be going to top eight. So, um. Let's take a look. I think I can find what the pairings and stuff are for this round. And maybe get a good indication of um, who might be in the top eight here. So Jeff Leonard is 3-0, and according to my sources. And MBT is two and one. So I'm not sure how this is all going to shake out in terms of who makes top eight. It might be like a tiebreaker thing. I mean, I know Jeff Leonard will, of course, make top eight. If you're three and oh, then you just definitely will. But for the people who are two and one, it might come down to stuff like tiebreakers. Hexlex is also two and one. Hmm. Curious. Very curious. All right, let's watch another replay while we wait for the next round to begin. And see what you guys are saying. By the way, hey everybody who's just joining into the stream, we're playing in the. 64 player Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup in the United States where these players are competing for the prizes that you see on screen. If you want information on how you can enter yourself, just check the link in the video description where you can join the Discord and play in these really fun, really cool tournaments that Konami is doing every weekend. They do them on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And they're hosted 
by, well, they're hosted by Konami and uh, spectated and streamed by some of your favorite content creators like myself and others. This game seems cool. This is Branded versus Trap Tricks. I'd like to see a Trap Tricks deck do well in one of these tournaments. I've always seen Trap Tricks as kind of a good. I don't know if I'd call it a beginner deck, but I think it's like a, a pretty simple like deck to kind of pick up and learn with, get some good results. You know, Alex, if you're watching the stream, you gotta play in one of these Master Duel Challenger Cups one day. Might be fun. Or might be a nightmare. Okay, I've got a question for you guys, chat. I'm going to put this in a poll as well. Physical or digital Yu-Gi-Oh? Which do you prefer? And you can also pick both. So, which do you prefer? Start to poll. I'm interested in seeing where this goes. I think more people probably play digital Yu-Gi-Oh than physical, but I want to be sure. I want to get to the bottom of this. Jeez, a lot of people are saying digital Yu-Gi-Oh. I didn't expect it to be the most popular, like, by far, but I just kind of had a hunch maybe it would be. Um, I see, it's, it's, a, it's a close poll so far. Yeah, guys, if you're just tuning in the stream, you can vote in the little poll in the chat. Do you prefer physical Yu-Gi-Oh, like with the paper cards? Do you prefer digital Yu-Gi-Oh, or do you play both? And if you want, you can also let me know why in the chat as well. Alex says physical for sure because a card game is a conversation, and it's hard to have that conversation through a screen. I think that's actually a good reasoning. I mean, I sometimes want the tabletop aspect of Yu-Gi-Oh, like I like the cards in hand. But I will say my favorite part about digital Yu-Gi-Oh! is just being able to quickly queue into games, because sometimes I just want to play. I'm not really as interested in, like, you know, all of the slack time involved in, like, waiting for the round to finish and this and that. Because I can just, like, as soon as I finish the game in Master Duel, it's like, poop, go to the next one, poop, go to the next one. And, yeah, not having to, like, rely on judges and, like, kind of rulings and stuff, I can just let the game sort of automate that for me. So that's why I kind of have come to prefer digital a little bit more. But if I had to vote in the poll, I'd probably just put both. We're doing the market research data for Konami ourselves here in the stream. Also, it looks like Chris is in the chat. Shouts, Chris. Everybody say hello. You poop between games? <laughs> Uh, sometimes. Okay, so a Thirsty Orange won that game. That's a funny name, a Thirsty Orange. All right, I think top eight should be kicking off here shortly. Let's see, how much time's left in the round? Yeah, the, the round, okay, so the round timer did end. So... I think we're about to get into our top eight. Yeah, it looks like we're about to get into our top eight. This is a 64 player tournament, so they are cutting to top eight. And if my intel serves me correctly, um, the top eight players, I don't know who all of these players are, but Pleiad, Ple Pleiades, Pleiades? Ushiez, CJ25, Guardian Light, Jeff Leonard, A Thirsty Orange, we just saw them, Foster Cube, that's a, a name I recognize from last week, and Ankle Light 
are all 3-0, and and so they are all our top 8 players. So unfortunately that means that MBT will n did not make it in. It looks like he got 18th place in the rankings. All right. So, top eight will be kicking off here in just a bit. While we wait... Well, let me see what production's got to say. When I say production, that's to say Konami... Uh, the Konami employees or the group that like runs the tournaments for them. Shout out to them, by the way. They put in a lot of work behind the scenes to keep these tournaments running smoothly. I'm really not doing much. I'm just spectating duels. But I'm spectating duels with you guys. And what better way, really, is there to spend a Friday afternoon than sitting with your friends? Friends being like, you know, me through a screen. Ooh, okay. I just got word that top eight's happening. Okay, here we go. What do they say? It's going to be Pleiades versus Ankylite, Guardian Light versus Jeff Leonard. Ushiez versus Foster Cube, CJ25 versus a Thirsty Orange. Cool, okay. So. I just gotta find what room they're in. Should be room one. Yeah, okay, room one. All right, this should be fun. So this is going to be top eight. Now, here's where things change a little bit for everybody who's just watching from home. Um, top eight is best two out of three. And also, in top eight, the players are actually allowed to change decks between games, which might sound a little bit crazy, and it certainly is a little bit extreme, but it's sort of the equivalent of side decking, I suppose. Now, um, just because they can change decks, you might think that's unfair, but also their opponents can change decks as well. You look a bit tired. Uh, what makes you say that? <laughs> yeah, so this should be pretty. This should be pretty interesting. So we can expect to see a lot of snake eyes, but we know that with players like um, with players like Jeff Leonard involved. It won't just be Snake Eyes, that's for sure. So, they're all getting set up and ready. Our top eight contestants. While they do... What are people saying in the poll? So, according to this poll... Most of you guys prefer digital Yu-Gi-Oh! And then... People also sort of kind of prefer both... And a few people prefer physical Yu-Gi-Oh. That's interesting market research. I was not aware of um, the metrics for that. Anyways, here we go. So it looks like we're about to get going here in top eight. I think all of these players are going to be at just these top, these top four tables. So we'll start at table one, watching Ankylite versus Pleiades, or Pleiades, or someone can tell me how to pronounce that. Have I played Dragon Ball Fusion World? I have not. I have not played Dragon Ball Fusion World. It is tough to get me to play other card games. Change the stream title. Top eight. Happening now. Okay, so, starting off, this is Ankylite versus Pleiades. Ankylite's playing a deck we're all a little familiar with, Snake Eye. It's gonna be top eight, so um, this is best two out of three, unlike the rest of the rounds that were just best of ones. That means that even if one player loses, they will have a chance to come back and still, um, you know, make an impact, even up the score. You can certainly expect to see a little bit of snake eyes today. 
in this top cut. Now, one interesting thing is that if you were to lose a duel, you will get to go first in the next round, and going first also means that, like, you'll... You can maybe, like, pick a deck that's intended to do better going first versus going second or something. So there could be some strategy there. It's sort of similar to side decking in the TCG. The Ubel cards, sadly, are not in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel yet. Hopefully in the next couple months, maybe in May or June, maybe sooner. I have no hidden intel on that, that really is just a guess. Pleiades. Pleiades. It's Pleiades? Is it Pleiades or Pleiades? I always thought it was Pleiades because, like, P L E I, like, E I is in, like, eight, like, the number eight, like, Pleiades. But if it's Pleiades, I mean, I'm not really sure. The Pariah Dark says it's Pleiades. Someone says Play Aids. <laughs> Plea, uh, D's nuts. Okay, well, anywho. It's something. Oh, Sprite Elf. Haven't seen him today. It today. That today. Man, that's gonna be harsh. Sprite Elf can bring back Formula Synchron. Lord, this deck does it all. the quarterfinals, man. Calm down. Okay, so Snake Eye ends the turn on Borload Savage Dragon, IP Mascarena, Formula Synchron in the back row, ready to be called back by Snake Eye's Flamberg Dragon or Divine Temple if needed, as well as Poplar. They'll probably both make their way to the field this turn. Wouldn't surprise me anyway. Wow, during the draw phase, Wanted Seeker Sinful Spoils. Even in the opponent's turn. It's never too late to activate a Wanted and grab a Diabella Star. And even better, it gives a chance to chain Flamberg Dragon to summon Formula Synchron to the field. Ready at the start of the main phase to do a quick Synchro Summon at the first available opportunity. Can I win with Destiny board? It says the most evil word of all. Disney. <laughs> Disney's six letters. But it's not to say that the Destiny board couldn't spell it out. Mm. Oh yeah, I should probably change my camera so you guys can see the full field, huh? Yeah, there's a Borload Savage Dragon there, Formula Synchron, a Poplar. So it is Plea. Pleiades, not Pleiades. Today I learned. Pleiades. Constellar Pleiades. Sorry, production was was telling me something. Anyways, okay. So, Banquet Soul. Pleiades is running Banquet Soul. Well, color me interested now. I love my Banquet Souls. They start out by normal summoning Banquet Soul Rosin. And Formula Synchron's chaining, of course. To summon the Baron de Flua. And also got negated by Borlode Savage Dragon. Bit of a shame. And can't forget about Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon summoning two level one fire monsters from the graveyard. Man, this deck does a lot. 
I tell you what. After this, in game two, we'll um, be watching Jeff Leonard. But for now, we have to watch Snake Eyes destroy Vanquish Soul. Hopefully not destroy Vanquish Soul. Hopefully Vanquish Soul can make a comeback. But I can tell you guys from my time in the ranked ladder, Vanquish Soul versus Snake Eye is a rough, 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 rough matchup for Vanquish Soul. It really and truly is. Not a pleasant one. Not unwinnable. But not pleasant. You gotta have some sauce, some spice, some X Factor, something nice. Cause it's tough. Oh, they do have Curry Car and Divin Carnage in their hand though. And that can actually come up and be relevant. Anyways, Vanquish Soul Raisin's gonna activate its effect to destroy everything in the column by revealing a light and a dark monster. Baron de Flora is going to chain its effect. To negate Vanquish Soul Rosin. And IP Mask Brain is going to chain and do a quickie little Link Summon. Maybe with Ash and Oak. Maybe to summon something like Opelosa, perhaps. Well, at this point, we just got to run for the hills and um, try to summon Curry Kara, I guess, for the Vanquish Soul player. There's Opelosa. Baron negates Rosin. He goes. And Baron's off the field, so it can't be sacked off for Kurikara. Nor can Borload Savage or anything else that's used its effect. Isn't it great the amount of things that Snake Eyes can do? You guys having fun as well? Link Rebo's back. Anyways. Pleiades is activating Stake Your Soul, revealing Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Pretty useful card in the Snake Eye matchup, in fact. And we'll summon Vanquish Soul, Caesar Valius. Aw, but that means since he summoned a card, Divine Temple of the Snake Eye activates. And it can special summon Snake Eyes Poplar from the Spell and Trap Zone. Snake Eyes Poplar with special summon. You know what that means? It's time to search a card during the opponent's turn. I'm not bitter, I promise. I love Snake Eyes. You guys love Snake Eyes, right? Well, leave a little heart in the chat if you guys love Snake Eyes. You can let Konami know that you love Snake Eyes so much. And the things that it can do. <laughs> um, yeah, so Vanquish Soul Caesar Valley is going to use its effect to pop a card on the field. Oh, what did they pop? Wait, well, how did this go? Okay, Apollos just negated it. Okay. I couldn't tell what was going on. Oh no, Opelos didn't negate it. They just tried to pop Opelos, Opelos and forgot that IP Mascarena had, uh, ga gives Opelos a destruction protection. That really bites. Sheesh. So many hearts in chat. Looks like you guys are really big fans of Snake Eyes. Pretty mean. Pretty mean, this deck. Okay, so... They decide to use Curry Kara here. Distribute off the Poplar, at least get the thing out in the field. Poplar uses its effect, though. Brings back Snake Eye's Flamberg Dragon to the back row. Man, it's almost like Snake Eye just never runs out of resources. And can just continue to play all day long in the opponent's turn. Sprite Elf's gonna activate and uh, special summon back IP Mask Rainer, by the way. Yeah, in case you thought that was gone, it's not. Hi, IP. She's here. Yeah, so it's time to enter the battle phase. Vanquish Soul, Caesar Valius. Attacks Link Karibo. Link Karibo reduces its attack down to zero, basically deflecting that. Plenty fun, plenty fun. 
And now it's time for Kurikara, Div Incarnate, to at least get an attack in. In something, right? What do you attack in this situation? Hard to say. I mean, you know, Sprite Elf can bring things back, like Formula, or IP. You could attack IP, but like Sprite Elf could just bring it back. So you attack Sprite Elf, and it's gone. And that's good. There is an issue, though. Opelos is still 3,200 attack points, so... They can do some attack and add some negating. Man, this deck really does quite a bit, doesn't it? That's quite a bit. Well, anyways, the turn's gonna end. So, uh, Caesar Valius. Well, it's not the turn, so it's not over. I thought it returned in the hand because the turn is ending. Caesar Valius is gonna link into Rock of the Vanquisher. So that way it doesn't get bounced back to the hand. Rock of the Vanquisher is gonna activate its effect to add a Vanquish Soul monster from graveyard to hand. Will Opelosa choose to negate this? It will! It's also cool because since Opelosa has multiple negations per turn, it could even do it again if it wanted to in this very same turn. Anywho, though, Rock of the Vanquisher is not going to be able to get back a Vanquish Soul card. Pleiades is forced to just set and probably end the turn right here. And end they do. I'm not bitter, it's just that watching Vanquish Soul lose kind of, uh, isn't the most pleasant time. That is all. Alright, it's draw phase. We're using Wanted Seeker Sinful Spoils. Gotta use that thing in the draw phase just in case the opponent has a draw and lock word. They wouldn't want, wouldn't want that shutting your plays down. Gotta use that quick play spell card searching during the draw phase for safety and maximum efficiency. Anyways, we're at the main phases now. Opelosa is down to 2,400 attack points, which means that it can't swing over Kurikara, but Rock of the Vanquisher is not going to be able to protect itself with its passive effect because there's not a Vanquish Soul monster on the field. Alright, what are we linking into? Jet Synchron and IP Mascarena make... Nightmare Unicorn, which also can't be destroyed by card effects. On activation, it's going to pitch this Dab Bell Star from hand and shuffle that back row card in the field back into the deck. Let's send away a card to summon Dab Bell Star, the Black Witch. Oh, yeah. Don't want to forget, Snake Eyes Flemberg Dragon went to the grave, so it summons two fire monsters back from the grave. Thankfully, Pleiades at least has Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion to stop that effect. So the recursion does not get to continue. Still, though, it's not the best situation to be in. Normal summon Snake Eye Ash. Hooray! It searches a level one fire monster from deck to hand. It's going to search Snake Eyes Poplar. And because Poplar deemed to exist, it uses its effect and special summons itself from the hand. When Poplar gets special summoned because it deemed to exist, it can add a Snake Eye spell or trap from deck to hand. Can't forget about that part. Oh, it doesn't add one. Maybe they're out of them. Well, it doesn't matter if they're out of them now because we have made... Access code talker. Oh yeah, Poplar also puts a card back. Well, Pleiades decides to give up because this game seemed a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult. Congratulations to Ankylite for winning the first game of this best of three. Now, as nice as it would be to watch the next game, we're actually going to hop over to a new match. This is Fridella versus Jeff Leonard at table two. So it should be starting shortly. I think they're about to start their second game. I'm not sure who won the first. But we'll certainly see who's going to win the second. Salty commentary? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not salty. What makes you think I'm salty? 
just that my favorite deck, Vanquish Soul, was kind of struggling a little bit against Snake Eye, and I wasn't loving every bit of it. It's so crap to see people scoop instead of fighting back. Well, Johnny, I don't know how much fighting back there was left there. Especially because these rounds are timed, it might be in a player's best interest in this situation to scoop instead so that they have more time to play in the next game. Alright, so Fridella's going first. They use Upstart Goblin, draw a card, and then set. Set, set. Hmm. Okay. Certainly a different... Certainly a different start. There are 31 minutes... And, 31 and a half minutes left in the round, by the way. Okay, so what's going on here? Jeff starts with Lightning Storm, blows up that back row, Normal Summons Fossil Dining, Petcephalo, and attacks. But he attacks into Mal Manadium Meek, which has 1800 defense. So, you know. Now, with Fossil Dyna on the field, Manadium is pretty much shut out already. Like, Manadium is one of those decks that's just gonna special summon over and over and over. Not necessarily a bad thing, but Fossil Dyna Potocephalo says no to all that. Now, without Moon Mirror Shield, Fossil Dyna is at least susceptible to being run over. Seems like Fridella did not have a card to actually run over it with. Like, maybe one of the, uh, Vesis forms with, like, 1500 attack or whatever. So, um, just gonna kind of stick with Manadium Meek in defense mode. Jeff Leonard adds a barrier statue of the Torrent onto his field. I guess the one weakness of a stun deck like this is that the monsters themselves have very low attack strength. Which at least means that, for a while, Fridella is gonna get to hold on a tad. And thanks to primitive, prim, primitive, primitive planet Rykphobia, it is going to decrease um, Jeff's monsters' attack points a little bit for every monster that's in defense position. He normal summons Scareclaw Rykart. What did it search again? Scareclaw Rival. Not too useful yet, but if you can get rid of these monsters that are locking out as much as summoning, there might actually be a chance. Scareclaw Rykart attacks Fossil Dyna, actually goes through. Super Sonic does why does stun decks exist, though? To stop combo decks. Two sides of the same coin, buddy-o. Either you combo, or you do the opposite. Another barrier statue of the Torrent gets normal summoned. Okay, so Manadium Imagination is going to activate, reveal another Meek in hand. Draw two, put a card back. Hmm. Well, so the good news here, if you're Fridella, is that you do get to just attack. Kind of just continue to attack. Oh, that's funny. You can even Special Summon another Manadium Meek, because Mirror Set to the Torrent prevents Special Summons except for Water Monsters. Also activates another Primitive Planet, Rykphobia. Which means that we're getting to add another Scareclaw Rykart to the hand. Decides to set it. And since there are now three defense position monsters in the field, they are actually able to slowly but steadily pick away at cards the opponent controls. This might actually be a potential win, or at least good advantageous position for Fridella, because next turn, assuming that there are still three monsters in defense position, they're going to get to pop another card. The Master Blaze is right. This is quite literally two decks on the opposite sides of the aisle. The slowest deck and the fastest deck in the game. Yeah, I, I think that's true. For sure. And Jeff's gonna concede that one. So, uh, yeah. Fridella actually wins. I don't know if Jeff won or lost the first game. They might be going into a Game 3 scenario. Hard to say. But since they both left table 2, that kind of leads me to believe that maybe Jeff got hit with the 2-0. Alright, well in that case, let's hop over to Ushia's and Foster Cube. Foster Cube I actually remember from last week's tournament. Oh yeah, I forgot I can check the replay history. Should probably do that, huh? I'll check it after the match. We can get a, um, a better update on what's going on. I can put the bracket in chat, by the way, if you guys want. You guys want to see the bracket? I assume you do. 
Yeah, here's the bracket. There, there's the uh, the bracket. Just threw it in the chat. Oh my god, this looks like a nasty Snake Eye mirror match between Foster Cube and Ushias. <laughs> Someone says, oh boy, a Snake Eye mirror. Yeah, uh, no comment. Okay, access code talkers here. Going on up to 5,300. What are we popping? Zolantis has popped, and now they can safely pop Promethean Princess, the Bestower of Flame. And that will, looks like, clear the board. So we got here, like, right here at the end of the, um... Right here at the end of the game. Well, great. That means that we can, um... Go back to the match history and see how the rest of these matches have played out. Oh, congratulations. Pulled your second copy of Royal Rare Stratos yesterday. Cool. Okay, so... We were checking on Jeff's score. He won against Fridella, it looks like, the first time. Lost the second time. So they are about to play a game three. Ooh, I kind of want to watch that. And then there's also CJ and a Thirsty Orange. Which one do you guys want to see? Jeff Leonard versus Fridella Game 3 or CJ versus a Thirsty Orange, which we haven't seen yet? Press 1 for Jeff Leonard. Press 2 for CJ versus a Thirsty Orange. Let me know in chat what we need to be watching. What's the good stuff? Seeing a lot of 1s. Sounds like people want to see, uh, see how Jeff Leonard does. Alright, let's take a look. Stun needs to suffer. We're gonna see if Stun's gonna suffer, huh? Alright, looks like this is game three between these guys. And Jeff's going first. One of the last things you ever want to see. Yogan the Spiritualist. What is this? Psychic Blade? Pays 2,000 life points and gives Jalgen 2,000 attack points and defense points. So you got a 2,200 attack, 3,300 defense, Jalgen the Spiritualist just hanging out saying, Nah, you can't special summon. Pretty scary. I guess the next worst thing from Moon Mirror Shield. Anyways, Fridella's gonna go take their turn and they're activating Peaceful Planet Calarium to grab Minadium Meek. Twenty two hundred jogging goes hard. It's up something. Or at least it ensures your opponent does a little bit of nothing. Okay. So, as we saw last time, just because Jeff is playing a stun deck does not mean that he gets an automatic win here. In fact, um he didn't set any cards on the field. So it's just jogging with a psychic blade, which makes me really worry about Jeff's hand here. Like, you might not have much of anything. I mean, you'd expect a few traps. So, um, without really any, like, floodgates or trap cards up, if Fridella can just find a way to swing over this Jalgen or deal with it, out it in some sort of a way, um, this might be, you know, this might be it. Like, this might be CJ... Whoops, sorry, I played that thing. I was watching the stream on... Anyway, okay, so... Sadly, Fridella's gonna have to end it here. That doesn't necessarily mean, like, a concession of defeat or anything. It's just, like, I think I see what Fridella's goal probably is gonna be. Hope to get to... Oh, God, Fossil Dine, I guess I added in the mix. Hope to get to, um... Active Despair on Fossil Dina? Man, what year is it? This is scary. So Fossil Dina goes up to 2200. Looks like Jeff really decided to go a little bit heavier on the equip spells in his deck build, so that even if he doesn't see Moon Mirror Shield, he can see things that are nearly as good for the sake of, like, keeping a Fossil Dyna or a um, Jalgen strong enough. Strong enough to wall the opponent out. Sorry, I had to try to stifle a yawn. Is anyone else annoyed they can't do anything with extra Legacy Pack cards? Yeah, it kind of sucks that Legacy Pack stuff can't be uh, dismantled. Oh yeah, you guys might not have been able to see the Axe of Despair there because of my camera, but 
Yeah, False Nine gets equipped with Axe of Despair. And now things are a little bit tougher for Fridella. Mostly because, like, man, you gotta hope for um, Rykphobia and enough defense position cards to start popping things in the field. Here's the issue, though. With Fossil Dyna and Jalgen now both having over 2,000, it's suddenly a lot harder to keep a defense position monster, like, alive. Anyways, they use Infinite Impermanence to weaken Jalgen, Normal Summon Max C, attack over the Jalgen. Now we're using Monodium Accession to add another Peaceful Planet Calarium. I think at this point, this is all about thinning the deck. Just get a new Monodium monster or something and hope that it thins the deck enough for you to see... Maybe Rykphobia? I don't know. They might run Forbidden Droplet. Maybe another Imperm. I gotta pray for something. Otherwise, this Fossil Dino is just gonna punch in for more than enough damage to win in like two turns if you add another monster in, which you did. Bear Statue the Torrent. So yeah, 2200 and 1000 means like next turn if Fridella doesn't get some kind of an out. Ooh, ooh, okay. Evenly matched, pretty solid, but the problem is with Peaceful Planet Calarium in the field, Jeff only has to banish one card, so he's probably just gonna banish the Barrier Statue, yep. And that doesn't really improve Fridella's situation much. But they made the best use of evenly matched that they could given the circumstances because they do have a field spell. So, kind of bites. Um, well, let's see what Fridella's got. Did they draw anything that they can use here? They set a monster. It's probably a hand trap, maybe a monodium. If it's a monodium, that won't be able to float or anything. Nicholas Hamilton popped in, just in time for Stun, one of his favorite decks. Not everybody loves it, but it is certainly effective right here. So, Jeff starts by normal summoning the Barrier Statue, and Moon Mirror Shield's gonna go on it, and I think that might just be enough. I mean, the Barrier Statue can attack the face down card, and it should be guaranteed to swing over it. It's a meek. And now Fossil Dyna is going to swing in for 2200 and win the game. Congratulations to Jeff Leonard. He progresses in top eight to the top four for next round. So, man. Ouch. Congrats to Jeff. Sorry about Fridella. It's going to eliminate him. And we've still got 19 minutes left in the round. So there's probably still a lot more dueling action going on. Why don't we take a look at Ushies, Ushies versus Foster Cubed. Let's see what's going on in this duel. How much do you uh, want to bet at Snake Eyes? Press 1 if you think it's Snake Eyes. Hurry, you have like 3 seconds. If you press 1, you were right. I'm assuming this is a new game. It's turn one, main phase one. So probably like game three, perhaps? Snake Eye Ash gets normal summoned. But hit by Imperm. It looks like the Wanted that resolved earlier. is going to recycle, get a draw. Normal summoning Jet Synchron. So Snake Eye Ash can't use its effect since it got hit by Imperm, but... That hardly matters. These two are going to still have a quick little Link Summon. Not a Link Summon, a Synchro Summon into Formula Synchron. Just to get an extra draw, I suppose. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I feel like this is the most commonly played Master Duel theme like in the whole game. Nicholas Hamilton says, Acts of Despair is funny. I usually prefer Mage Power, but I guess with the Pot of Extravagance and Duality Limited, the Despair pivot might be warranted. Could you explain that a bit more for me? I'm not... I mean, I don't really play this deck often. I guess the idea maybe being that, like, Mage Power relies on you having more, like, spell and trap cards, and so since there's less ability to draw them, 
that mage power might not necessarily be as reliable as an act of despair. If I'm understanding it right. Bonfire! I'm assuming he maybe drew that with Formula Synchro or something. Get Snake Eyes Poplar. Snake Eyes Poplar gets to summon itself for existing in the hand. And so it does. And because it made its way to the field, it's going to use its effect. When it's normal or special summoned, you can add a Snake Eyes Speller Trap from deck to hand. Okay, yeah. I would say that uh, having extravagant stacks to gain card advantage is needed to keep mage power good because you'll have more back row. It's Divine Temple of the Snake Eye, everyone's favorite card. This is going to put a Snake Eye monster from the deck face up in the Spell and Trap zone as a continuous spell, which means that there will be a play to continue this turn with. Let's link Snake Eye's Poplar off. Eh? It's Link Karibo, and because Snake Eye Poplar left the field, he gets to put a card in the back row. Itself, in this case. My favorite part about Snake Eye Poplar, I think, is how, uh... It just does something, like, at every stage of its life. It's in your hand, it summons, it summons, it searches, it leaves, it comes back. Okay, turn ends, so now we're down to Foster Cube. At the start of main phase one, they're gonna activate Wanted. Seek your simple spoils. Typically, this card is activated in the draw phase or something like that, so that you can avoid draw and Lockbird, but I suppose Foster Cube has no fear in that regard. The Pariah Dark. So you'd say it's overloaded with effects. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, Pariah Dark. It's not like Pablo does too much or anything. Ooh, Max C gets activated after the Wanted. So that means even if Foster Cube wants to summon Diabella Star, they're going to be giving Ushi as a couple of draws in the process. Because that's what Maxi does. Van Maxi says kicks. You know what's interesting about this? I am not sure Maxi is the issue here. I'm going to be honest. But we can put it up to a vote. How about that? All right, guys. Maxi. Yay. Nay. We are putting it to a vote in chat. You guys can decide if Maxi is good or bad. I'm curious how this poll is going to end. I'm thinking most people will say nay, but who knows? Some people actually really like their Maxi. I just think that in this scenario, like in the Snake Eyes matchup and stuff, Maxi is needed to like survive. And oftentimes it doesn't decide the game. Like, Ushia's used Maxi here, but I'm not sure, just based on what I'm looking at right now, that that like, means that they'll necessarily win this game. Who is to say? Yeah, Nicholas Hamilton just making a few poignant points about um, the... Oh, God. Maxi activate... Wait. Hmm. Why did they max C here? I guess in case formula... Well, wait, no. Formula can't... Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway. Yeah, let's see what people have to say about max C. What, what does the poll say? What does the, the survey say? Wow, 59% of you so far are saying yay for max C. So you guys actually like max C? If you voted yay for max C, let me know here in the chat why you like it. Is, is it actually healthy? Is it the solution? Is it fine? Or is it a toxic cesspool of a card? Okay, Master Blaze has informed me that they're using Maxi to ward off a temple summon. Hmm. Pretty smart. Pretty smart indeed. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that Divine Dipple would want to summon a monster, especially because Formula Synchron is kind of useless on its own. 
I've seen Formula Synchron be used to sink into Herald of the Arclight, actually, in the opponent's turn. That's something that I saw last weekend. So, maybe that's kind of what they're trying to avoid here. You know, this actually is not the worst scenario. Like, even though Ushia has used Max C, Foster Cube is, is still getting to play and might actually be in a better position for it. Ooh. Maybe you shouldn't let him draw on so many cards, though. Ash Blossom's gonna negate Snake Eye Ash. Ouch. You now you lose two cards for that exchange, and well. Maybe the um, Foster Cubed just kind of like goes to battle phase here and just kind of like attacks. I wouldn't blame them if they did anyway. Assert a little bit of dominance. I mean, Link Kribo is going to stave off one attack, but just getting the damage in here might not be the worst thing. Uh, actually, what do I know? I don't play this deck. So how do you play Snake Eye? What's the play here if you're Foster Cubed? You guys can inform me. Educate me. Oh yeah, for those of you guys just tuning into the stream, first of all, please like the stream. I appreciate it if you do. It really helps. If everybody likes the stream at the same time, particularly if you have not already done so, it will make YouTube surface the stream to more people, and that really, really, really helps us out. Second of all, this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup for the United States. Konami's hosting these every weekend. They're free to enter, and you can win cool prizes such as these for a 64-player one. But the 256-player and 128-player ones have even more prizes at store. So yeah, if you like playing Master Duel, it's a free thing to do on the weekend and a chance to win some really cool, cool merch. I'm actually wearing a Master Duel hoodie right now, in case you couldn't tell. The sheer card advantage that Ushi has now is insane. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of cards in hand, but I'll be honest, I'm not so sure that Ushi has necessarily has this in the bag. Like, they're certainly going to have an advantage with all those cards in hand. But a lot of their cards are also just sort of... No, not used up. I mean... I don't know. Who do you guys think wins here? Foster Cubed or Ushiez? I think Ushiez has the edge with just the sheer amount of card advantage. But they weren't able to get much tempo set up in their first turn. And their Divine Temple's gone, although that can be recycled, right? I mean, they're definitely going to have a, a Wanted to recycle it with. If they want to. This is going to be... Is this enough damage to just win this outright? 1,000... Okay, 10,350. Hmm. Yeah, you guys are saying Foster Cube's got this? Kind of looking like it. I can never tell with games like this. Yeah, it's a lot in hand. Foster Q better win here. Zelantis cleans up and could give Barone a second to gate this turn. Oh, that's true. I did not think about that. Oh, man. This is scary. Oh, man. Yeah, it's Promethean Princess. She's here. So that means what? Will she get back to Flemberg? So we have 3k on the board. I feel like this is actually. I'm trying to. Has Verona gated yet? It hasn't. Okay. 
Oh, man. Okay, yeah, that's... Mm. So, he uses Blamberg. Puts back Link Rebo. I think that's going to be it then, huh? 10,700. Yeah, I think that's it. Unless the space down card is something we just none of us can predict. Now, is Nibiru in Ushiez's hand? Barone can negate it, but is there an effect veiler to counter that? With this many cards in hand, yeah, there's effect veiler. Okay. So, while it looked like Foster Cubed might have had the okay to win this game, not the case anymore. Baylor negates Barone, and now Nibiru will resolve. Everybody goes, and a rock shows. Nibiru in attack mode. Foster Cubed at least gets a draw or two. So that's something, but man, really went through a lot. Now, they are going to use the Divine Temple to summon back Snake Eye Oak from Ushiez's side of the field. Ushiez. Ushiez. Yeah, good patience. Okay, they've already used the summon from Grave Effect, so... Hmm. Tributes off Oak. Summons Link Karibo. Are Lincoln again? Dark? What's the goal at this point? Just try to deck him out? I mean, surely there's not enough special summons left to do that. If Snake Eye has enough special summons that they can do that... Jeez, that's insane. Okay, they're actually going to use Wanted to stave off... That dark summon. That's what I was thinking. Is he's just gonna try to deck him out? Seems like the only thing I can rationalize here. Combo decks are weird. They scare me. Normal summons effect failure. Wait, Foster Cube never normal summoned in that entire turn. Jeez, this deck is insane. It's Nightmare Unicorn. Could just die a Bell Star. Puts Nibiru back. Well, it's damage. Huh. Crazy. Such a wild, swingy game. So it was pretty smart to set that wanted after all. Alright, so now uh, I guess Ushi's just gotta kind of just gotta put the monsters in the field here, right? I mean, like what set card would hmm. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that Divine Temple can summon the opponent's monsters in the back row. So Foster Cube at least is going to get to summon Snake Eyes Poplar. Surprised he summoned an attack position and doesn't make you do that. Yeah, I figured I'd summon in defense for the small chance at possible survival, and it's probably not gonna happen either way, but. Wow, Maxi certainly made for uh, an interesting game here. Although, I'm just going to put it out there now. If somehow Foster Cube wins this game, just somehow, magically, miraculously, whatever, that'll be really, really weird.
I don't see it happening now, but man, that'd be crazy. Called by the grave. Gotta banish that Promethean princess. Can't have her pesky. Oh man, wow! Use called by the grave in the imperm column? That's pretty funny. I mean, it doesn't really matter now, I guess. Barone can negate imperm, so it's not gonna really matter, but man, that would have been. That was like, I guess, an easy thing to. Hmm. Interesting. Triple Tantric's talent. Ouch. Bonk. Whenever I see uh, Triple Tactics talent, I always think of like the bonk meme from the from online. Wait a second. Is this all the damage they're gonna be able to do? Seriously? Huh. With all those cards in hand? I expected more. That's not enough to win, is it? Or am I missing something? I, I mean, I never know when I'm missing things with, this, with these decks. Is there like... Huh. I just figured it, I mean, like, with all these cards, it'd be like, oh, okay, there's certainly enough to... Either a bad hand or it's Mercy. I don't think anybody's showing Mercy in the top eight of this thing. I mean, there's prizes in the line. These prizes, to be exact. But no, seriously, that's... that's odd. I thought that they could have gotten 8,000 on the board easy. They didn't need that much more. Like, look at this! I guess it'll win in time. How much time's left in this round? Oh, yeah, okay, it's time. So, yeah, time just went off in the round, actually. You are right. Yeah, cool. Okay. He did, in fact, win in time. Congratulations. To Ushi as Ushis. Man. Ah, wild stuff. So that's gonna end the first round of top eight. So now we've got two rounds to go. We're now in top four of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup. For those of you guys just tuning in the stream, first of all, make sure you drop a like on the stream because we're about to get into some really intense gameplay. And I see over 300 people watching, but only 250 likes. So if we could run it up, that would be really cool. Please and thanks. You don't have to, but it'd be nice. And of course, if you want to enter the Master Duel Challenger Cup, you can find all the details you need down in the description of the stream. Win some cool prizes like this Master Duel hoodie that yours truly is wearing, or even some Master Duel sleeves. And that's just for the 64 player events. They're going to be doing 128 player ones tomorrow, a 256 player one on Sunday. And I think at the end of the month, there's supposed to be a 512 or more player one with a PS5 on the line. I think that'd be a pretty cool prize, yes, given a tournament that's free to enter. Anyways, we're about to hop into top four. So, this should get interesting. I'll say that much. We've got Jeff Leonard playing against, I believe, Ankle Light. Yeah. And then Ushiez versus CJ25 at the next table. So, huh. Things are about to get interesting. I think it's going to basically be, can Jeff Leonard deal with these Snake Eye decks? Because I feel like everybody else is pretty much just playing Snake Eye. At least that's my understanding of it.
So as soon as the match starts, we'll hop right into the action. In the meantime, what are people saying in chat? Are they playing best of threes? They are playing best of threes in this top cut. They are playing best of threes in the top cut. Now, last time that we did this, um, it seemed like a pretty predictable tournament. And then the ending, like the finals at the end, ended up being like really crazy and exciting. So, hoping to see something like that happen again. It'll be tough for Leonard to go all the way, but I'm cheering for him. I mean, I would like to see if, you know, he can come out on top of this. Snake Eyes is a rough deck to deal with, especially if you have to go second against him. Jeez. Anyways, so according to our poll on Maxi, the majority of you guys actually seem to favor and approve of Maxi. We got 54% for Yay and 45 for Nay. Do people really like Maxi now? Interesting. Not saying I disagree, but just wasn't sure. Konami, push out more accessories, says Trunks Strife. Konami's watching the stream in some capacity, so maybe they'll actually hear you. If you have one thing you want to say to Konami, you can say it in the stream and they'll definitely read it. <laughs> maybe. What's another fun poll we can have while we wait for this match to begin? Any poll that you guys want the chat to answer, any question. It can have two answers or even as many as four. Is there a place where we can see the top eight deck lists? So to my knowledge, no, but that's actually just because the players can change decks between rounds. So basically a person in top eight could use a variety of different decks. So I guess there wouldn't be like one single deck that got top eight. Still, though, I guess you could seek these players out individually and maybe um, ask what deck list they were playing specifically. Looks like the matches are beginning. Let's start with Ankleite versus Jeff Leonard. You guys ready for this? Press 1 for Jeff. Press 2 for Ankleite. Here we go. Jeff and his stun versus Ankleite and, um, not stun. Here we go. Jeff starts off with Fossil Dine Apachecephalo, activates Prohibition, calls Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. Interesting pick. Sets one. Sets two. In phase. And go. It reminds me of that Yu-Gi-Oh card. Release. Reverse. And burst. Imperm. Oh, man. Hits Fossil Dino with infinite impermanence. You know, that's a pretty brutal one. Oh, well. Maybe not. Seven tools. The bandit is activated. Pays a thousand life points. Good old classic old school Yu-Gi-Oh card. And negates infinite impermanence. Now, does Ankleite have another one? They do not. They're forced to set a card face down. Man, that's crazy! Seven tools the bandit in 2024, stopping infinite impermanence, keeping Fossilina alive. And Ankleite just got a set. Jeff continues the onslaught by normal summoning barrier statue of the drought. Attacks with Fossilina, it's a max C. That was not gonna be too helpful against this deck. And now the drought swings in for a thousand. Now, one thing that gives me a bit of pause is that Jeff doesn't have access to any there are many trap cards here. Maybe the one card he has set is another trap, but he doesn't have a moon mirror shield or anything to protect his monsters in terms of attack points and limited amounts of spells and traps. So, he's going to normal summon Snake Eyes Poplar. That's Ankle Light. Activate or search Sinful Spoils of Subversion. Try to force Fossil Dine into the back row. It's going to get hit by Dark Bribe, however, giving Ankle Light another draw, but negating the one chance he might have had to deal with this Fossil Dina. That's a little scary because now Snake Eyes Poplar is just a sitting duck on the field and the turn's got to end. 
Still, without Axe of Despair or Psychic Sword or anything like that, Jeff's monsters are not super strong. So, even though he can put a few of them on the field like this... Ah, Ankleite's gonna concede this one. Determines that, nope, there is nothing that they can do. So, that's game one for Jeff Leonard with the stun deck. Let's check out table two, Ushias versus CJ25. We'll watch from the beginning. Uh, this way we can catch up on the match. It probably isn't too deep in. Their game would have just started too. Stun deck is the ban hammer. What do you think Jeff has in the extra deck? Maybe some super poly targets? Elder NC Intus if he wanted to run Dogmatic of Punishment, perhaps? The Deer Servant, like Punishment Engine, that still kind of sometimes shows up in these stun decks. Depends. Anyways, this is Ushias versus CJ25. Ushia starts off playing Snake Eye, Die Bellstar gets summoned, searches original simple spoils, it gets ashed, that gets called by. But yeah, that would be my guess as far as what Jeff's got in that extra deck is probably just um, things to kind of dump super poly targets. The usual sort of stuff you'd run in a stun deck. Super Poly is not like the best thing in this current format, to my understanding anyway. Not a lot of dark decks running around, so you can't make the really big stuff like Supreme King, you know, Dark Worm, not Dark Worm, but Supreme King, Starving Venom and all. Obviously you can still make like Mud Dragon and stuff, but those aren't really as as good. Garura can come up at times. Your average snake eye starting turn going on. Nothing super special to see here. There's Apollosa. And Blamberg puts an IP in the back row. Okay, so not the scariest start. I mean, Apollosa is obviously still a huge threat, and there's still Divine Temple and stuff, but this could be worse. So, CJ starts out with, oh wow, Dark Contract with the gate. Is this an Unchained deck? It's That's the vibe I would get from it. Well, Flamber goes ahead and summons IP Masquerade just in case. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about um uh, Draco, Keast, and Earth Golem. They can, those are like super poly things for dealing with Snake Eye. Not the world's most effective, but like serviceable. Okay, so Nightmare Phoenix hits DDD Vice King Requiem. Yeah, I'm assuming this is Unchained. Man, the amount of things that Snake Guy can do in their opponent's turn. I always remember trying to find like good uses for Draco Akist in the uh, in the extra deck, like with Super Poly. It's it's very format dependent, but sometimes it does work out. It's what like Dragon and Warrior, I believe. My description says prices instead of prizes. Oh. Yeah, I should probably change that, huh? Thank you. Updated. Thank you, Drag Ice. Konami wouldn't be too happy if they saw that, I'm sure. They're the ones who run these events. And they just sponsor channels like mine to host them in a live stream like this. You guys can send, send, spend, your Fridays watching Snake Eyes decks cut each other's throats out with powerful plays and Snake Eyes Poplars. Oh, this is Pause Prosperity. What do you grab? A bombable chamber. That's getting popped.
Or it was, if Apollosa wasn't on the field to create it. Yeah, Dragon and Sinker. Oh, well. Okay. That one's gonna be a dub for Ushiez. CJ gives it up. Unchained are not able to play. Not with Apollosa hanging out. Let's check back in on Jeff Leonard and Ankylite. So, in this game... I believe Ankylite would have gotten to go first against Jeff Leonard, and that would probably put them in a really, really, um, really good spot. I mean, Stun usually has a pretty rough time going second. We'll see, though. We're going to watch it from the beginning so we can see exactly how it went. We'll do it at uh, increased speed, though, just to quickly catch up. By the way, thanks, Master Blaze. I've been really enjoying your additional context of commentary on the Snake Eye deck. It sounds like you're a lot more familiar with it. Perhaps you play the deck, or maybe you're just kind of used to testing against it. Yeah, Nicholas, I'm also very curious what, um... I mean, if you're playing stun, what do you do when you're going second? Now, remember, in this tournament you do have the ability to change decks between rounds that are like best of three so jeff leonard could have switched to an entirely different deck i could see maybe something that's just like kind of a the conko style thing or maybe something with you know kaijus and rank eight kind of to just go for lzks lava golem kaiju that sort of thing not really sure but we're gonna probably find out here in just a moment So it's his first turn. Snake Eyes still, you know, snake eyesing. Okay. So, at this point. Jeff's taking his first turn. He's going second. He's got to probably have like some sort of a man. Okay, here comes Fossil Dina. It is out. Not gonna really be enough to deal with this field on its own, though. I mean, he can certainly attack some things, but it's about all. Ah, Moon Mirror Shield. Okay, that'll do something. So Moon Mirror Shield on Fossil Dyna means that it will always be able to swing over troublesome monsters in battle, at least. So getting over, um... Getting over Promethean Princess here is... It's a good situation to be in. The small snake eyes can't really do much on their own. Not while Fossil Dyna's in the field, anyway. And Promethean Princess won't even be able to come back. Or at least I would say all that. But Fossil Dine is out of here because of Ambla Whale in the graveyard. And Jeff concedes game two. Surprise! Ambla Whale showed up to ruin your day. Alright, well, that means these guys are going to be going into game three here in a sec. But while we wait for them to do that, let's watch this game as well. I'm basically just hopping back and forth between tables one and two here. I do like the way that Amblo Whale works. It kind of feels like it's an actual secret effect in the anime where it's like, yeah, this card, you can't read what it does. But surprise, it can destroy stuff. Okay, so CJ decides to stick with Unchained, does not change his decks between the rounds. I've not seen uh, very many people choosing to change their decks today. When we streamed this last weekend, that was not the case. Last weekend, people were changing decks, but not the case this time. So, um, I think this is more or less the standard Unchained starting kind of lineup. I've been trying to learn the Unchained deck myself, so I've been picking up on the gist of how it goes. Master Blaze says, I love Promethean. She made like five cards amazingly powerful overnight, like Ambla Whale and Zelantis. I 
I mean, I think Promethean Princess as a concept is a really cool card. I think it'd be more, even cooler if like more cards got access to a Promethean Princess-like Link monster for different attributes. It could probably get a little bit wild, but I mean, conceptually, I don't mind her. It's just that like, man, Snake Guy is really strong. It really is already quite strong. Okay, so our inboard has Wave Hiking Caesar. This can negate two special summoning effects. It's not a hard ones per turn. And we've also got Rage. I know this can link with the opponent's card. There's another play that they can do. I forget. Oh, Anti Spell Fragrance gets flipped face up. That's actually a kind of nasty one. It's not going to stop Wanted from searching here, but it will stop Original Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye, um, Subversion. They won't be able to use the Field Spell immediately anyway. Well, hey, Victor. How's it going? Victor's in chat, guys. He helps us organize our Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah, so this one's going to be a little rude. Um, I mean, I want to say that this isn't, like, unwinnable, right? I don't, I'm not super familiar with this matchup, though. Somebody in chat can maybe explain it to me a little bit better. Yeah, quick play in the draw phase is really good. Another really nice thing with um, using Wanted in the draw phase is that it stops the opponent from using Draw and Lockbird. So, yeah, it looks like Ushiez is basically just forced to try to go in the battle phase um, and swing. It's kind of it. It doesn't do much. What pack did Amblowell come in? Amblowell came out like a few years ago. It's from like... What is the set? Savage Strike? Or something? It's been a while. Amblowell's kind of old. Not like old, old, but like rather old. In 2020, 2021, something like that. It's been a few years. Somebody in chat, let me know. What set did um, Amphibious Amblo Whale come out? Okay, Unchained Soul of Rage is going to prevent Diabell Star and Ash Blossom from making a Barone. Chat, what do you guys think of anti-spell fragrance as a floodgate? Is it another like annoying floodgate that needs to be banned, or how do how do you guys feel about it? One, if you like anti-spell fragrance, think it's fine. Two, if you're like, nah, this thing needs to go. Nice stream, Paul. Thank you, Son Goku. All right, Uchiha's gives up the ghost on that one. So. Does that mean that's just the end of the rounds? It might be. It might just be. Surely Jeff, did Jeff lose his match? Let's see. When, oh! Ankylite beat Jeff twice, okay. So Ankylite won, let's just take a quick look at the replay while we wait for the next round to start. We can see how that final game went down. It seems like it was a swift, swift defeat. Because the game we were watching wasn't very long. Alright, let's see. Normal summons water barrier statue gives it power of the guardians. Not really the best thing. Raigeki... You gotta get solemn. Imperm Raigeki. Always a nasty combo. Imperm's the barrier statue. Which means Bonfire can just kind of start going off, and that's probably where the game ended, huh? 
because now that barrier statue's turned off and Jeff's hand is just two other barrier statues. Ouch. Okay. So he gives up, and that's how Ankleite won. That was a very swift defeat. Congrats to Ankleite. So they're going to move on to the finals. So I think that that means we've actually got our finalists ready here, huh? Man. Oh, wait. Okay, these guys are in their last round. Lucius versus CJ. Winner's gonna play against Ankleite in the finals. Let's watch Unchained versus Snake Eye game three to see who makes it into the final round to win these marvelous prizes. Let's see what it is. So, Lucius is going first. They normal summon Snake Eye Ash. It gets hit by another Ash, which hit, gets gets hit by a Called by the Grave. Looks like there wasn't a Ghost Spell to stop Called by the Grave, so Ash is going to go out of here, and other Ash is going to go through. It gets Snake Eye Poplar. So the Snake Eye Poplar exists from the hand. It's going to summon itself, and CJ gives up. Out of here. They just surrendered right there on the spot. Wow. Ouch. Okay, well. CJ and Jeff are out. They'll be playing for third place because there is a slight difference, I believe, in the prizes you get from third to fourth place. It's just basically your pick of what color sleeves you want to have. But um, we've got Ushiz versus Ankleite. It's gonna be our finals. You guys hyped? You guys ready to watch what will, I suppose, be a Snake Eye Mirror match? But hopefully it'll be a good Snake Eye Mirror match. Press one if you're excited. Press two if you're probably a little tired of seeing Snake Eye, but you will stick with it, be a good sport, and watch anyway. Hope to see ones and twos in the chats. Because it could be good. Last tournament, we had a really interesting and different finals. It was Snake Eye versus Monodium, which sounds kind of pedestrian. However, it did not go the way that we expected. And it did go to Game 3 and went down to the wire. It was pretty fun. Hoping for the same this time. Congratulations, at any rate, to Ushiez and Ankleite. We're about to see them play. Who is in charge of prizes? This is a Konami tournament. So, um, Konami sends out all the prizes to all the winners. Okay, so let the finals begin. I would want to say I may still have to wait a couple minutes. But yeah, it's going to be Ankleite versus Uchez. Probably Snake Eye Dittos. They are allowed to change decks between rounds, though, so we'll see. If you're watching the stream and you've been enjoying, this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup. We're going to be doing another one tomorrow, and the Konami will be doing them all month. Your chance to win some really cool prizes and such. And if you're enjoying the stream, make sure to drop a like. If everybody likes the stream, then it will share it to more people on YouTube, so more people get to see this awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! And, looks like these two players are both in the room. Maybe we'll be able to watch the third place, third, fourth place playoffs as well. Depends on how quickly this ends. All right, let me get the finals. I'm gonna be starting at 2.45, so in two more minutes, I've just been informed by production. How do you join, do you need an invite? Nope, all the information that you need to join in a Master Duel Challenger Cup is down in the description. You can join these. Konami is hosting them on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Hosted by different content creators such as yours truly, or many others. Like MSTTV, I think they're going to be hosting one next weekend. I believe on Sunday, uh, Crip's going to be doing one. Kriparian. So, there will be a few. A few, uh... And, 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 you know, Shiggy's, Fifth Rate Duelist. I think Dada Doyo was supposed to host a tournament. He might still be doing more. First time catching the stream. Love your Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Thank you, Kelmir. Much appreciated. 
right now this is just a 64 player one but they actually have 128 and 256 player ones that are coming up as well as a 512 player one i believe that's scheduled for the end of the month so that one's gonna have a ps5 as the prize but right now these are free to enter and you can still win some cool stuff like this master duel hoodie i'm wearing or some sleeves they are in fact real life master duel sleeves like this here i can actually show you what they look like because i mean i guess showing boxes like that probably doesn't sleeves like this yeah they've got white ones and black ones i hear these are actually worth a pretty penny so it'd be cool or you could just collect them be like me i don't actually open any of these i'm always afraid to use the these beautiful sleeves because i feel like if i you know you open them once and they're gone you can always double sleeve to kind of keep them in good condition but still I'm very anal about things like that. I like to keep stuff sealed and in good condition where I can. Particularly sleeves for whatever reason. Angel Vara. Your awesome content made me want to try Yu-Gi-Oh! for myself. I realized it wasn't for me, but I still watch the channel. Keep up the good work. I appreciate that. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! is certainly not for everybody, but it is still a lot of fun. Or it can be a lot of fun. I always encourage people to at least give it a try. Master Blaze says, same, I'm pretty sloppy, but my cards must be pristine. Yeah, I mean, it's very, like, with, I had a pack of sleeves from, like, Worlds 2019. I didn't want to open them, I didn't want to use them, I just like to kind of keep them sealed. I can use, like, regular pedestrian sleeves for most of my decks. <laughs> Troll Lord, you're funny. Um, yeah, these are region locked. These tournaments are US only. However, 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 um, I should inform you guys that um if you guys want konami to do like master duel challenger cups for other regions like they have them in europe obviously and they just started doing them in the united states let them know on social media spam them bug them just be like hey do one for canada or do one for like mexico or south america or whatever because um people you know i know like people want these things to come around and konami would be glad to do them i think if you guys just let them know that's my advice to you all right looks like the finals are beginning. Here goes. Acolyte, who she is. Let's watch this thing. Let's see which player is going to come out on top. Who's going to win the Master Duel sleeves, the hoodie, and all of the glory as well. Let us lock in. We start off in the draw phase with Wanted Seeker Sinful Spoils. Dodging around... Draw and Lockbird just in case. It grabs Diabell Star. And Bonfire is going to be activated. We're going to grab Snake Eye Ash to the hand. We'll normal summon Snake Eye Ash. Use its effect. Snag a copy of Snake Eye's Poplar. Snake Eye's Poplar was added to the hand, so it can activate its effect to special summon itself. It summons itself. Searches for Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. The signature field spell. Then Poplar is going to link into Link Rebo as it's a level 1 monster. And because Snake Eye's Poplar was in the graveyard, it can use its effect and place a monster, such as itself, in the spell and trap zone. Then Divine Temple is activated, which lets them place another Snake Eye's monster from the deck into the spell and trap zone. This time it's Snake Eye's Flamberg Dragon. And now we send Link Rebo away. We summon Diabell Star, the Black Witch. On summon, she's going to set original sinful spoils, Snake Eye. It'll activate, it'll send Poplar, and it's gonna special summon a level one fire monster from the hand or deck. Say hello to Jet Synchron. Jet Synchron and Diabell Star are synchroed together. I was gonna say fused together. Synchroed together to summon Borload Savage Dragon. And at this point, the Borload Savage Dragon activates its effect equips Link Karibo and gives itself a Boral counter that it can use to negate things. But Snake Eye Ash sends that Link Karibo to the graveyard to summon Snake Eye Oak from the deck. And now Snake Eye Oak activates its effect. It can target a level 1 fire monster that's banished during the graveyard and special summon it. Gets back Jet Synchron, uses its effect. It and Flamberg Dragon go to the graveyard to summon a monster from the deck. It's Snake Eye's Flamberg Dragon in defense mode. The first Snake Eye Flamberg Dragon in the graveyard was sent, so that means it can summon back two fire monsters. Poplar and Ash are somehow back on the field. Absolutely insane. Never seen a play like this before. So, these two are going to now Synchro Summon into Formula Synchrons Level 2. When it's Synchro Summoned, 
This allows Ankylite to draw one card. And you might think it's over here. You might think this is the end. It's not. Because Formula Synchron and Snake Eyes Poplar are now Link Summoning to make Sprite Elf. Sprite Elf protects the monsters that it points to from being targeted. It's going to use its effect and special summon back Formula Synchron. Then Wanted Seeker Sinful Spoils will banish itself from the graveyard to put another Snake Eyes card back in the deck and draw one card. Jet Synchron uses its effect. Sends a card from hand in the graveyard. So it's Cyframe Gamma. Summons back Jet Synchron from the grave. It'll be banished when it leaves the field, though. So these two now make a little ink monster that we like to call IP Masquerina. Lots of cool summoning animations happening here. That guy's Flamberg uses its effect. Puts Formula Synchron into the back row, ready to be summoned out during Ushiez's next turn. Two cards are set, and now the turn is over. Time for Ushiez to fire back with what I presume is also going to be a Snake Eye deck. They did have the opportunity to change decks before this match, but yeah, it's Snake Eyes. So during the draw phase, Wanted, Seeker's Simple Spoils is activated as well. So far, we're starting off with very similar turns. Flamberg Dragon chains to Wanted to put Formula Synchron onto the field. And with Formula Synchron in the field, it's going to be able to do a quick Synchro Summon in the main phase. But first, we got to get there. It's standby. It's main phase. Ushias has player priority, so he can activate the first thing. But it's going to have to be a really important first thing because, well, Borload Savage can negate just about anything that happens. And Formula Synchron is just waiting to quick Synchro. So, Ushia starts off with Infinite Impermanence because they control no cards. They're going to use Infinite Impermanence, target Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron, though, is going to chain to that. An interesting decision. So, Formula Synchron and Flamberg Dragon Synchro Summon. Synchro Shokan. Throwing the Fluor. In attack mode. Since Flamberg Dragon went to the graveyard, even if it's the opponent's turn, it gets to summon back two fire monsters. It's Snake Eye Ash and Snake Eye Poplar. Snake Eye Ash was summoned and Poplar was summoned. Both their effects activate. Poplar is going to grab another spell or trap card from the deck. And Snake Eye Ash will search a level one fire monster. Since full spoils of subversion, Snake Eye gets added and a Snake Eye Ash, perhaps for next turn as a follow up play. Kix says, Flamberg is so annoying. And it kind of is. But, um, Link Karibo activates its effect, sends away Poplar, summons itself back to the field. Poplar activates, and it's going to put Flamberg Dragon back in the backfield. So that way, at the first sign of a summon, Divine Temple could perhaps summon that Flamberg back out. Anywho, Sinful Spoils of Subversion Snake Eyes activate. It's going to target Barone de Flor, try to force it into the back field. That's a bit of a risky play, and if you think about it, in a mirror match like this, that thing could still just come right back out. But, not to worry, Veranda Floor is going to use its effect, negate Sinful Spoils of Subversion, and IP Masquerina is going to chain to that. So, that'll let it do a quick Link Summon, and the Link Summon monster that it makes won't even be able to be destroyed by card effects. IP, Ash, and Barone combine to make Apollosa. Bo the Goddess. Pointed to by Sprite Elf, so it can't even be targeted. With 2400 attack and 3 monster negations, this one is going to be a pretty roughy toughy. Borload Savage Dragon still hasn't actually used its negation either. Oh man. Brutal stuff. So, man, I gotta say, Ankleite got very much the ideal opening here. I'm not sure how Ushiez gets out of this, but they're gonna try. So they special summon Diabell Star, the Dark Witch, and activate its effect to set a sinful spoiler spell or trap directly from the deck. Will that actually go through? I assume not, but no, it actually does. Opelosa and Borlode Savage choose not to interact with it. And so, what's Diabell Star going to set directly from the deck?
This is game one of the finals, by the way. The stakes could not be higher. Winning a hoodie? I can't imagine playing for much more. At least on Yu-Gi-Oh. So, Diabell Star is about to set a card. Ushes is thinking pretty carefully about what exactly they want to set directly from the deck. Hank says, I could break that board with one Karma Cannon. Hmm, not so sure. Borlod Savage Dragon can always negate that, so. Man, this is rough. The only card I can think of that might really change this game here would be Triple Tactics Talents, maybe? Okay, so there is a one for one. Gotta send a card from hand to grave. Ushia sends a second Diabell Star. I somehow feel like one for one might not be resolving here, but it totally could. I mean, remember, whatever monster gets summoned, its effect could just get negated by Alpalosa. But maybe you want to negate one for one here just so that you don't have to even worry about that. Trunk says that hand traps aren't even great against Snake Eyes in the first place. That's generally true, yeah. Snake Eyes certainly has a bit of trouble. Um, or Snake certainly does not have much trouble dealing with hand traps. But it does have more trouble against some than others. Like, I think Imperm's pretty effective against them. Nibiru would be if they didn't have the Fueled Spell Divine Temple. Oh man, Ash Blossom comes in and hits one for one instead. You never like to see that happen. A lot of card advantage lost. Master Blaze informs us that negating one for one feels optimal because they could pressure Opelosa with battle if they're allowed to link off. Very true. Alright, so finally we reach the normal summon of Snake Eye Ash. And this is where Opelosa finally comes in and says, Nah, we don't want that search happening. And I think that is um, well advised. Snake Eye Ash would probably be trying to get something like Poplar, and that would be trying to summon, and then trying to search, and we can't have all that. So, with this in mind, we enter the battle phase. It's a bit of a tricky one, though, because you can't even really attack safely. Link Freebo exists, so you're going to have to first deal with that. Thankfully, Snake Eye Ash is at least disposable, so just attacking Link Freebo here... Not the worst thing, right? Ash wasn't otherwise going to be able to swing over anything. Oh, Link Rebo just goes. And so, Diet Bell Star is going to attack Opelosa. Cool, so it only was able to use one negation. Not too bad, I mean... Fighting through that many disruptions and still having something of a board is... You know... Serviceable. I believe in Ushias, I think that they can manage to make something happen. So now in main phase two, they're going to use Original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. They send away Snake Eye Ash. There's only one problem. Borload Savage Dragon still had that counter, so it's going to negate Original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye, preventing any further plays from being made. Ushez gives up the ghost for game one. So Ankylite's going to win game one. It's not over yet, though. This is the final, so it's best two out of three. All right, let's see what it is. So, um, not a bad first game. I mean, it certainly shows that Snake Eye has the power to keep pushing through some negations, but I, I really do feel like Angolite had just like kind of the optimal opening there. Okay, so Jeff has not played against CJ for the third slash fourth place crown. The battle for the bronze, you might call it. While we wait for these two players to prepare for the next duel, though. How are you guys enjoying the finals, chat? You liking these Snake Eye Mirror matches? If you're enjoying them, let Konami know by saying so in chat. Everybody repeat after me in chat. 
We are enjoying watching Snake Eye Mirror Matches. We are enjoying watching Snake Eye Mirror Matches. Woo! I can't think of a uh, more tantalizing matchup. <laughs> Our clit, Eden. <laughs> Woo! Okay, well, looks like these guys are about to kick it off with the next game. <laughs> it's so great to see people in chat are having fun watching this this master duel matchup. You guys seem so enthusiastic. Okay, game two is beginning. I'm assuming Ushez is going to be taking the first move this time. We are enjoying our Snake Eyes mirror matches. We are enjoying our Snake Eyes mirror matches. I hope this deck exists forever. Okay, so it's time for game two. Between our very favorite decks to watch. Yes? Ushez goes first, activates Bonfire, is going to grab Snake Eye Ash from deck to hand. Is there a drill in Lockward waiting? May have? Apparently not. Normal summon Snake Eye Ash. It's going to get hit with Effect Veiler. Pretty, pretty nasty, pretty mean. I always prefer to use Effect Veiler or Infinite Impermanence against something like Snake Eye Ash, as opposed to just Ash Blossom, because now it can't use its second effect. At least that would be the case, but Called by the Grave is going to hit that Effect Veiler and presumably negate it, unless maybe Ankylite has something else in hand. A second Effect Veiler on that Snake Eye Ash? Sheesh, they do not want, they do not want the search happening. I'm a Troll Lord. More Snake Eye support. Woo! That's right. All right, so Snake Eye Ash does get successfully negated, though at the cost of two effect failures, sheesh. The amount of effort you gotta put into stopping this deck sometimes. That might actually be enough to end the turn, though. It all depends. I mean, if they had wanted Secret Sinful Spoils, I assume they would have activated it to start the turn off. So maybe that means that it all just ends here. Or like, you know, they make a Link Rebo or something. Oh, okay, that's gonna end Ushia's turn. So using the two effect failures is worth it. We're back to Ankylite, and they're in a pretty powerful position because, I mean, they just have to beat a Snake Eye Ash. There are no resources in the on the field or in the graveyard or really anything. So they start off by sending Flamberg Dragon and summoning Damn Bellstar, the Black Witch. It sets Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils straight from the deck. That means they've already got Original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye in the hand. It activates, but Ushiez does have Max C. Is there a call by the Grave as the final card in Ankylite's hand? Apparently not. So, despite the fact that Ushiez doesn't have really a very powerful field, Max C is going to allow them to draw some cards. And if they draw the right cards, they might be able to find a way out of this situation. Max C might just even up this game yet. Snake Eye Ash is going to search for Poplar. Poplar is going to use its effect. Summon itself, and add a Snake Eye Spell or Trap from the deck to the hand as well. Alright, so Divine Tipple is going up, and it's putting Snake Eye's Flamberg Dragon into the back row, and that's where this turn's actually going to end. Ankylite does not want to give Ushia's access to any more draws, so they just use Snake Eye's Poplar, attack Snake Eye's Ash, and the turn ends. Now, with Divine Temple in the field, they are set up to at least make some small amount of resistance in Ushiz's turn. Depends on what cards are in the hand, or what card, rather, is in the hand. We know that there's a wanted set on the field, so that's really not a huge threat. Ushiz starts off with Snake Eyes Poplar, normal summoned. Not another Ash, it seems. It's going to get original Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye. We are enjoying our Snake Eye Mirror Matches. Remember to repeat in the chat, guys, so Konami sees. All right, we're turning Poplar into Link Rebo. Then Poplar is going right back into the Spell and Trap Zone. Or not. It's actually going to be Snake Eye Ash that goes into the Spell and Trap Zone. But Ankylite is not satisfied and 
is also going to use the field spell to bring out Flamberg Dragon to the field. Hmm. I wonder how this is going to play out. So, original simple spoils is going to be activated. What they're going to send? Snake Eye Ash to the grave. And Maxi gets chained from Ankleite's side this time. So, if Ushiez wants to win this duel, they're going to have to put up quite a lot of damage. Also, they're chaining Wanted to go ahead and grab that Diabell Star monster. Perhaps so that they don't draw it from Maxi. Wouldn't want to do that. Although, it's not like it would mean much, since Wanted can also get it from the graveyard. But still, I suppose that's not a bad thing, spinning the deck out. You might want to draw some Nibirus, some uh, extra Veilers. They've used two Veilers already, right? Ash Blossom. Really, any hand traps are useful here. So, Original Simple Spoils gets Snake Eye Oak. And Snake Eye Oak, as we know, can return a monster to the hand or a special summon it. Now, special summoning gets a little bit scarier here because with each special summon, Ankleite draws a card. Master Blaze, unironically, actually is having a lot of fun watching the Snake Eye Mirror match. The thing about a Snake Eye to me isn't actually that I think it's the, the world's worst Yu Gi Oh deck known to man or anything like that, but more so I think it's um, the recursion bothers a lot of people. Maybe even more so than something like Sword Soul. Now, the fact that you like Vanquishol means I have to respect your taste, because Vanquishol is some, some good stuff, man. It's some, some good stuff. But, um, yeah, I don't hate Snake Eyes. I think I just hate the recursion that they offer. Which, I guess that is hating Snake Eyes, isn't it? Hmm. It's complicated. I totally agree with you, by the way. The Hand Trap Wars can really be draining. I would like to play Dungeon Dice Monsters one day, if I can find one of the ones on eBay. Seems fun. Hmm. That Bell Star is back, this time thanks to Dark the Dark Charmer, Bloomy. So, since Usha has summoned back Ankleite's Diabell Star, they're the one who gets to set a card from the deck. And... They go for Sinful Spoils of Subversion, surprisingly. Triple Tactics Talent. Take control of a monster the opponent controls? Hmm. What's it gonna be? Snake Eye Flamber Dragon. I'm gonna put Ash in the back row. Was Flamberg Dragon summoned this turn, or can it switch to attack position? Oh, I see the play here. It's gonna try to go straight for game. But wait, can it switch? I guess it can always like, link it off or something, but I was just curious. I think Flamberg was summoned this turn. Yeah, I think so. Ah, that's going to get sniped by Ash Blossom. Is there a call by the grave to stop the Ash Blossom? If there's not, then... Well... That's... That might be a little bit tough for Ushiez, because now that's definitely not enough damage to win the game outright. Move my mouse cursor? Maybe... Troll Lord, that witch is thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Hmm. <laughs> oh man, this this really kind of sucks. Uh, if you're Ushas, you really wanted to win the game here with damage outright. So, it all comes down to this. A maxi ultimately deciding things. Whenever you play into maxi, it feels like the other person just ends up seeing effect veilers and ash bosses when they need to. But then if you don't, or you'll lose anyway. I am normal. I can be trusted with the attractive witch lady. <laughs> Chat, can you guys be trusted with the attractive witch lady? Press one if you can, two if you can't. I will not elaborate. 
All right, so it looks like Uchiez is um just thinking. Can they get to 8,000 damage here, and is it worth even trying? There's 5,250 damage on the board, but to summon more cards means to give Ankylite more draws and increase the chances of seeing another debilitative hand trap, perhaps even an Ibiru, which would really be, uh, well, that would certainly ruin their day, and, you know, at the rate that we're going, hate to say it, but that'd probably be the match. Anglet already won game one, so. Alright, elects to use Snake Eye Oak. Summon out the Snake Eye's Flamberg Dragon. It's not enough damage to actually win, though. It's actually less damage, technically. 4,850. So. A Link Summon it is. Yeah, everybody in chat says they can be trusted. It's Selene, Queen of the Master Magicians. So, is she going to get a spellcaster back, mayhap? You can get dark, right? Well, it's based on levels, isn't it? No, it's not based on levels. It's just a new spellcaster. So, ah, uh, well, Ushez gives up. That's it. That's the, uh, that's not even time of the round. It's just Ushez gives up. No more plays left. That means congratulations to Ankylite, our winner of today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel United States Challenger Cup. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Ushez is the winner. So, that, not Ushez is the winner. Ankylite is the winner. Ushez is the second place. Not so bad, really. Based on the prizes here, that means they'll still be walking away with both packs of sleeves, but only Ankylite gets the Master Duel hoodie, the white sleeves, and the black sleeves. Congratulations to them. They win this thing. Awesome. And with that, that'll bring today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Challenger Cup to a close. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We'll be back tomorrow where we'll be playing a 128-man Master Duel Cup. If you haven't already, maybe take a chance to see if you want to sign up for one. It might be fun. You can get a chance to win some awesome prizes, um, like a Master Duel hoodie or even like a jacket. There's some other stuff they're giving away. They're doing Rescue Rabbit plushes as well for some of the larger ones. You get a chance to win this cute little guy. So yeah, okay. Hopefully you guys liked it. Thanks for tuning in, joining me this wonderful Friday afternoon. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys tomorrow as well. Without further ado, see you in the next one. Fast turn.